Welcome to the show, everyone. I hope we're live. I think we are. I'm a little bit late behind schedule. That is because I've been delayed with a few more late minute, uh, last minute requests. Watch is being sent in. This is going to be a different show today. And I will explain what's been going on and we can get into it. Let me just catch up. There's so many of you already in the chats. Welcome, everyone. It's uh, it's a pleasure being here. I hope you're all well. Uh, let's see if I can shout out some of your names before we get into the show. Uh, Curtis, I saw there was a there was a post from you about your wife and gallbladder surgery. I really hope that she's going to be okay, and um, I'm sure she will pull through fine. Uh, William watches. Clive, welcome. Cheese, uh, uh, Fahim, welcome, brother. So a few, there's, there's been a discussion going on behind, uh, what, Orange Hand, welcome, Pete. Okay, okay, we're getting in. We're gonna try and keep up with the chat as we go through. But this was a, uh, a crazy development. Comment one, if you can hear me, it's a good way to start, I think. And we will see just how uh, things changed all of a sudden. Let's see, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> okay, good, that's good to know. I can see a few ones. Welcome, everyone. If I don't shout you out, I'll be sure to try my best as we go through this. It's going to be a bit of a different show. And it's really one that blew me away. So we can just start with our general, uh, you know, how we normally start the show with the live five. So I'll pull these up in the interim. And I've gone so far to actually give it some kind of title card. And we can get into the actual later section of the show. And yes, Clive, I did get what you just sent. Um, we can talk about that in a second as we carry on. This was supposed to be my week off from the channel. And I ended up making five videos. So it <laughs> just goes to show that uh, things change. You know, when you want to be productive, sometimes nothing stops you. But um, this is quite irrelevant to the show itself. But... Uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this because the the theme has changed quite drastically and I'm trying to debut a new episode to the channel or a new segment. We'll see just how well it goes and I can give you the background to the story. So Turkey Vulture, welcome. Blue Shirt, great to have you here. So many of you in the chat submitted uh, pictures already and uh, it's, it's going to be so good. Shazbot, welcome. Thomas, great to have you here. So good that I got your, your message. Ant G, welcome. Great, great to have you here. You could easily go six hours. We're going, to, we're going to turn it down to two, but it's one stream that I highly suggest you watch as much, as long as possible, because uh, the watches on show today are your watches, and I'm the only one who knows what was sent. So it's kind of like a poker game where the house knows the rules. The house always wins, as Fahim said to me earlier. And uh, you, you're going to be amazed at the watches on show. And I got all of your emails. Don't worry. I, I've literally just stopped. <laughs> it took me, I think, the last three, three minutes I got prepared. That's how much of a rush it was. So, uh, okay, we're going to start the show with the live five. If you don't know what that is, it's just my way of getting into the show, warming up ever so slightly. And what I always try to do and normally forget, but not this time, is link the five references of the watches that are going to be featured. And here they are in, uh, from left to right in order. So in case you'd like to see more details on the pieces, there's a very basic rundown. I definitely didn't put much thought into this. These five watches are just pieces that maybe caught my attention during the week. Okay, and then we can get into the meat and potatoes of the show. I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a great week and uh, restore experience, no Rolex and live five. Yeah, you know, we, we do, we mix it up a bit and that'll be blended with what you're going to see with the watches on display. I think you're gonna be blown away by what was sent in and it's, it was amazing. Yeah, we'll get to that now. I'm rocking a uh, Spanish Shiraz. Rob, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, it's so good having you all here. Thank you, there's, there's over a hundred of you joining. <sighs> It's going to be great. Okay, so we're going to start with these pieces. Um, Patek reference, and I really like this piece. It's probably one of, the, there's a handful of Patek pieces that take inspiration and really use Breguet, the Breguet layout. This is a reference 5022P, very classically, oops, classically proportioned. I knew that was going to happen somewhere. Again, I'm warming up my uh, mouse hand. I love the Breguet numerals, the, the rail dial that runs around it. 
Brigue hands. I mean, what is not to, to miss? It's beautiful. And then next to it, a two-tone Tudor Black Bay. Now, I thought it would be nice to bring that in because it's a watch that doesn't seem to get as much attention by most. But I think if you're going for a brand like Tudor, this is quite a cool option for someone who is getting into the hobby, for someone who wants to try something with a bit of precious metal, even though this is a form of plating in a way. It's a little bit more substantial than what you used to get back in the day. Uh, and there's lots of names, Bud Owens, Tono, yeah, Ant, Welcome, Chili Badger, Mark P. Oh, it's going to be a good show, Mark. Part of, I'm sorry that you couldn't see it. It's going to be amazing seeing the watches that were sent in. Amiga Railmaster, 57. I love this piece. It's one of those. It, it sits in that same category as the Explorer, Rolex Explorer for me. Really appreciate it. I love the, the simplistic nature, the, the amalgamation of the hands and the, the numerals, the baton layout, the sharpness. There, there seems to be quite a great relationship between all of those elements on this piece. And I think that's what really makes it stand out. The crazy thing is just how much these things cost on the market. Next, we have a JLC Geographic, I hope. <laughs> uh, let's see. A Master Geographic. Okay, okay. Just reminding myself. And this seemed to be a watch that caught my attention because it looks like quite the sleeper when you look at it at first. And I love it on a, on a bracelet. I think it's... It's really something interesting seeing JLCs. You notice I have two side by side on bracelets. You very seldomly see JLCs on bracelets and there's a few featured in this view, uh, video tonight that you will be seeing. Utter mind blow. I think it really looks great. It looks very different to what you would expect. You would imagine they would be sitting on leather straps, but um, I love the understated nature of this watch. Meanwhile, you know it has a world time complication and it's just a powerhouse. There've been a few uh, people interested in this piece lately. I think the black dial is one to really pay attention to. And Casey Jones, you'll, your watch will be up very soon. Don't worry, watch my speed. I will slow down. I'm quite energized because it's been, it's been a mad rush the last, I would say half an hour to get everything in order. Um, the bracelet looks very similar to the Odysseus. Very good point. And that's from Mason. Very good point. And it, it is, I'm pretty sure it's very similar. The only difference is that it needs one of those extrusion shoulders that links up with the lug. I think this looks a lot neater, personally. Uh, you know, you have a bracelet that sits the same width and tapers all the way down. And then a reverso on a bracelet. You very seldomly see this watch with that setup. And it looks great, especially when you see them advertised and uh, they really look good. So that's the Live 5. Nothing too extraordinary, but pretty great. I must say this Patek 5022 you very seldomly see this watch. I think they're, they're very rare. I mean, it's, it's platinum. They're very rare collector's pieces nowadays. And for that reason, I think most of these will be found in a Sotheby's auction house or Phillips, whatever else. Okay, now we're going to jump to the main route of the show. So what happened was, I was thinking, the way it began, um, I'm going to be, so as, this, as you see on the left-hand side, these are all your watches. I've categorized them alphabetically, so you will be able to see, uh, well, you won't be able to see much, but at least I'll be able to mention your name, first name, and the watch as it comes up. So it makes my life a little bit easier. What happened was I didn't have a stream last week, but the week before, someone, I can't remember your name, but you recommended sharing wrist shots from the audience in some way or another. And I remember that Watchbox did something similar, or they, they still do something similar. And I thought, okay, cool. Maybe it can be a segment like the Live Five, getting us into the show and starting the, the talk. So I thought, cool, let's start. And I, I put a post up and thought, well, maybe we'll get 10, 10 emails, 10 watches, and then we can just roll from there. 50 emails later, in less than 24 hours, I kid you not, uh, we now have a full set. The show was going to be based on something completely different, which I will move until next week. So the idea is once a month, if this is a successful segment, I don't know, once a month we host wrist shot week. Over the course of the week, you email in your photos, your wrist shots to me. I put them together and we can all sit down and appreciate these pieces together. And 
I like a wrist shot week. It's got a nice ring to it, and I think it might be pretty cool. Will I be wearing Oakley's upside down on the top of my head? Chi Town? No, I won't. I'm actually got a got a headset on, so it'll be quite awkward. Okay. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a bit of a different show, and I still have links open. So if there are any questions, we can maybe jump. But the watches that you're going to see on display are yours, and it's going to be the bomb. So of course, as you would imagine, I start the show. What I'm wearing, yours truly, is wearing the Smiths Everest. I love this piece. I think it's so great. And the story, I'm, I'm actually working on a write-up about this watch. I think it's it's so fascinating that the Smith's name linking itself to Rolex in a way, homaging the 1016, though both of these watches went up Everest. And um, it's a great tribute, I think. One of the coolest tribute pieces out there. And yeah, so it's it's going to be crazy seeing these watches. I think you're going to enjoy this. A bit of a closer shot, and I need to catch up with all of you in the chat. I can see most of you are listening to what I'm saying. <laughs> so... Yeah, we'll see what happens. I hope you can all join. And I don't know how we're going to like get the engagement going, but I'm sure most of you will say that's a great looking piece. And so it goes. We can start a discussion around the individual watches that we look at. There's about 80 images here, so we can flash through them. I don't know how long it'll be, but <laughs> listening intently. <laughs> Fahim, thank you. Okay, first off, Ant, Ant G. He sent me his collection to look at. Don't know when that'll happen. But this is a boutique edition 56 of his. It's one of his latest purchases. Immediately you notice, and this is what blew me away, the batons, the way the batons have been arranged. You can see the Luminova on them, but there's no Luminova on the numerals. And it's a really interesting look, wouldn't you say? That blend is something fascinating because it divides up the watch very well, easy to read, at the same time, very elegant, sporty. Uh, it's, it's so cool. And on a bracelet, it looks incredible, right? And I hope I'm saying this right, that it is a boutique-only edition. Um, <laughs> Dear Artifact, we could give our thoughts on what we enjoy about each piece. Absolutely. Don't worry, Dear Artifact, I have your watch too. Yeah, I, I literally, up until the last minute before 10, I was editing these together. So as we go through, Beautiful looking watch. And I, I think this is the only Vacheron being shared. Look at that open six on the 16 as well. Beautiful looking watch, really does look great. And as you can imagine, these are all going to be uh, wrist shots since it's a wrist shot week. But what's amazing is just the, the level of variety that we will be seeing. I hope if my keyboard works with me here, apparently not. This is from Anton and it's a Ziblu Milgas taken with a Nikon camera. Beautiful. And the detail of this piece, when we zoom right in, really high definition. There were a few Milgauss submissions. And I will also say, what is insane, what really blew me away, the reason why I said an insane collection from the audience, it almost feels like you guys were in cahoots with each other when it came to uh, dis, you know, bringing these watches forward, because you would expect repeats. You would expect five Submariners and 10 Explorers and you know, 15 Speedmasters. I kid you not, there were maybe three duplicates of the 50 plus submissions. The variety here is just unreal. I think you're really going to enjoy it as we keep running. So Zebru Milgaus, what needs to be said, it is gorgeous. Thomas Burnett owns it. Um, Anton, if you're watching, gorgeous piece. And uh, oh, I just love it. Look at the depth to the detail of that dial when it's you know photographed super high res. As we get into the series, if it does develop into something, then maybe we can start incorporating really high res images for everyone to see. But it looks amazing in this light, wouldn't you say? Matte, very flat. You, you don't notice any kind of glare on it. The green on blue. I've done a whole video on the Milgas. That's just awesome. Okay, next watch. Blue Shirt Buddha. He shares his. Polar Explorer 216750. I hope I remembered that right. Uh, this watch really is great. And it took me some time to really get used to it. The 42 millimeter size is a little bit off putting, but uh, yeah, it's for, for me at least, it's off putting for me because I, I practically can't wear it. But it is gorgeous. A little bit on the low res side, but we get a good idea. And you wouldn't believe this is the only second generation Polar Explorer that you will be seeing. I mean, out of the 50 submissions, this is the only one. 
this is a mind blow. Next one, blue shirt. This is a, a 1963 Seamaster, I think, around about that time. I don't remember if he said it was a, a, a Berthier watch, but it's a gorgeous piece. Seamaster's dressy, stunning. Okay, there's lots of you go, lots of chats going on, and let's see. I'll, I'll leave, let's leave up the polo for a second as we jump and have a look at what's going on here. Let's talk about where everything is based. Uh, since you've mentioned the thin bezel on the Explorer, I can't unsee it, but Owens. Yeah, it's it's not just that only, I, I, that's what I said in the in the write-up, but it's it's the it's the proportions on the dial for me that get a little bit conflicting. In saying that, there are some first generation Polar Explorers that we will look at. I mean, five digit references. But it is just a, a cracking watch. I think as an everyday wearing piece, it's superb. For those who have moderate to average size wrists, wrists, you can pull it off really well. The introduction of that orange hand, bringing it back again, brilliant. Okay, on to the next. This is from Brian, and it is a 14060 Submariner. Clean, easy, simple. This looks like he was out snowboarding. Um, and you won't believe this, this is the only no-date Submariner that was submitted. I mean, how is that for ludicrous? <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, Tippy saying, I, I heard Rolex gave up on the QC in 2020. <laughs> if that's the case, I know they've been a little bit um, problematic with some of the paint jobs on their, on their hands and everything. I noticed in a watch finder video with that GMT that they highlighted, Okay, I'm going to get in really close because some of these HD images are great. I mean, you get to see every single hair. Beautiful condition, as you would expect. Gorgeous looking piece. And uh, I think for this kind of condition, especially when you're in the snow and you're wanting to read it easily at a glance, that added size is quite practical, no? The thing is with a five digit reference is that it does look relatively small, wears relatively small. And in a situation when you want to see the piece, read the time, you know, it's there, it's easy to see. Uh, and Leia, I hope I hope your wristwatch was selected. I, I mean, I, I pretty much followed and got every single email that came in. As you can imagine, I didn't thank you all individually because there was over 50 emails over the course of less than 24 hours. So <laughs> you can only do so much. This is from Casey, JLC master ultra thin on a bracelet. And he said that I actually helped influence his buying decision with this piece, and it looks insane. This was this was actually submitted uh, end of the live stream the other week when the suggestion was sent forward. So he's one of the early sub submitters of this, and it's just gorgeous. I, I love the bracelet on this piece, and he sent me another image to go with it, just to get a better highlight on the bracelet. And uh, I think he he looked at the um, I did a very early video, a couple of I would say well over six months ago, discussing the, what did I compare it against? The Patek Calatrava, Vacheron Patrimony, and this in, in rose gold. But these, these master ultra thins, terrific value for money. But with an added bracelet, it becomes a whole new animal, I think. It's and like black like, by Carassus, clean, very clean, yeah. Um, great, I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> We're just rolling through these pieces. There's there's a lot on board. Casper, uh, Casper submitted some great pieces and beautiful photography. Explorer two, five digit reference, very clean. I love these HD shots. And I'm going to try and move my mouse in such a way that there's no interruption on the screen. <laughs> I hope we can do it. There we go. Uh, really gorgeous. What can you say about this watch? I um. There's there's a few of these that have been shared. I think at least two. Condition is superb, and um, I think it's on an ostrich strap, if I'm not mistaken. It looks terrific. It really is nice. Nice and sharp. And something about the proportions of this watch, I think it has a, a slight advantage over the 42 mil. If you can't pull off a 42 mil watch, this one takes the cake, especially if you have a fair skin. Uh, the white dial really accentuates, this, and in a way, it. It, it blends better with the skin. I don't know how best to describe it. Probably have to write it down, but um, it's a gorgeous looking watch. What can you say about the Explorer 2? Then we have a Yacht Master featured on a yacht, which is pretty cool. I think this is a blue dial. Might be mistaken. I 
I think it was a blue dial he sent in. I don't know the reference to this piece, but it is gorgeous. And it's so nice seeing these watches in the wild, so to speak. You get to see them in different lighting conditions, not in uh, your, your generic rendered form or um, in a showroom, which is really nice. Uh, let's have a look at what's going on in the chats. The Polar is getting really pricey, Watch Viking. And I think that's because I would imagine social media plays a part in it that now that modern Rolex is so difficult to obtain, it's like everyone's just jumping on what they can as fast as possible. And I, th I think that the hype for the, the first the original generation Polar has also helped push itself forward. As we know, Archie Luxury introduced the watch to the community, I would say. His, uh, his influence with regards to the Reverso and Patek in general, it's insane. Uh, DGB saying Yachtmaster is a 116622. Thank you for that. And uh, Tom Austin, welcome to the show. It's, there's something about these yacht masters. It's that platinum bezel. Speaking of which, there is a new plan. And actually, okay, I'm going to deviate away from this for a quick second. Let's pull up Safari. I want to look up. It's, it's a platinum Omega Seamaster that you get when you buy a car. If I'm not mistaken, uh, let's see, 2020, we might see it here. Come on. I've seen it circling social media. It's so rare that they haven't even featured photographs of it. That's terrible. Okay. I, I'm, I apologize. But it is essentially a new Seamaster, the, the standard Bond Seamaster, just like this, but full platinum, platinum case, platinum bracelets, bezel, dial, looks beautiful. It, has, it pulls, and just to give you a, a comparison, it reminded me when I saw it of the 35 millimeter Yachtmaster. Had that same aesthetic, you know, very, very white and clean all the way through. Uh, Omega has been advertising it. If you're on Instagram and you follow Omega, they have been showing it off, but it looks gorgeous. And I um, highly recommend you, if you're on Instagram, try and have a look for it. They seem very rare. The only way you can find them is if you buy an Aston Martin, you get the new Bond Seamaster as well as a full platinum piece. Really cool. Um, pity I couldn't find a rendering or, or a picture of it. It's that new that it hasn't even been publicized yet, uh, but it's going to be so rare. I'm sure there are only like 20 of them. Who knows? Okay. Taking a sip of the wine while I catch up here. Does anyone know what the platinum weighs? Mr. Perpetual says. It's the heaviest, the heaviest metal that you can possibly get other than lead. Um, I can't imagine it's very heavy on this piece since it's just the bezel that's platinum, if I'm not mistaken. But that, that blend, it's almost as if you have ghosting on the bezel. And actually, the wearing experience would be brought down ever so slightly because if I zoom out a little bit, you notice that it, it seems to sit well on the wrist where the, the blue is accentuated or the black, depending on the light. And you get that nice form factor of the case integrating with the bezel. It's too cool. <laughs> Lead watch, and I knew uh, something was going to say something. Uh, could be a new trend. Oh, absolutely. Especially for a diver. This is from Casper again. This is a Doxa sub. I don't know enough about Doxas, but I do know they're very famous for their orange dials. And it's beautiful. It's, it's so nice seeing this level of variety from all of you. And trust me, as we keep going through, you're going to continually see little bits and pieces jumping out that you didn't expect. So this is gorgeous. I'm sure we would imagine this piece to have an orange dial with, you know, with the orange bezel, but I just love the shot. Some of these photos are terrific. And the legibility is also something to, to take into account. The size of the, the plots, size of the hands, squared off. I mean, it's 70s all the way through with, with that Doxa bracelet, as, as I was about to say. Bees of rice, looks terrific. Real dive watch there. I need to talk about the Doxa piece. And then check this out. Nomos Club, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. Nomos Club is a watch that I, I feel would be perfect for someone like a, a university student. In saying that though, look at it. Look at it in this lighting. Highlight of the orange, plays on that 70s motif, has a California-esque dial with your Romans at the bottom and your standard numerals at the top. It's, it's not an aesthetic that I really like very much. I find it quite divisive. I'm sure most of you feel the same way, or, or maybe not. I don't know. 
at least for me, I find it kind of puts off the, the balance a little bit. But you notice they've done a few things like try to balance out the four with the two, which is something. Um, pencil hands, it's very sharp. I think that the photo really does it justice because you get to see it stand out nice and flat, but also pretty expressive in the way it sits. And there's, there's a beautiful teal that runs around the numerals. So the teal placement is painted on, and then you get your Luminova painted over it. It's great. I mean, Nomos, Nomos is a great brand for what they offer. Uh, it seems to divide the community a lot in a few places. And next we have Cedar Canoe. He's in the chat, I think. Uh, he submitted a Zin Blue One. It's a very special limited edition piece. I think there's one of only a few made. And it is something cool. Zin with their bracelets. They know what they're doing with their bracelet integration. I love this. It's very German-esque. You would imagine. Let's try and zoom in a little bit closer. Beautiful rounded, rounded ends. Apologies. And uh, nice floating. It's not integrated. It actually allows it to form around the wrist nicer. The fact that it's fully brushed is also something to pay attention. Cool gradient, Dear Artifact says. Yeah, absolutely. Love it from dark to, to white. I'm surprised more brands don't do that, actually. It's a very effective trick. The, the deep sea sea dweller, that's the one that comes to mind for most of us, uh, with that James Cameron blue effect really is something nice. And the orange highlights as well. You notice just how the, the hands and the plots are all in a similar relationship with their styling and placement. Syringe style all the way through, very 70s. Do also like the orange highlights, very effective. Next, this is from Sevi. In his 2CV wearing, Zenith Daytona on a strap, two-tone. I mean, how cool is that? This was also a very early image that was sent over to me, I would say, a week or two weeks ago. Um, our last-minute substitutes allowed. Cheetown, I can't. It, ta it takes a good five minutes for me to save everything and, and move it across to the other computer. Um, and what I'm going to do in future, if we do run this again, is uh, cut off submissions maybe an hour before the show. So 9 o'clock. GMT, 9 p.m., something like that, because I was literally at it until the last minute of the show. Don't worry. Uh, we can do this again next month. I hope this to be a monthly thing where we can all just sit back and enjoy each other's pieces. And just the sheer, as, you, as I'm sure you've noticed already, the variety of stuff that you're seeing at the moment blew me away, to say the least. I wouldn't have dedicated this stream to a series of watches if I didn't think the variety was great. So, uh, yeah, gorgeous. And this, this two-tone Zenith, I mean, Zenith dials really did it right with that balance. Once Rolex moved to their modern chronograph movements, uh, we lost something about that balance. Uh, also, this contrast between the gold and the black is probably the most legible Daytona you can get. And there was a few mentions about that recently, that the black dial two-tone, it's, it's one of the easiest to attain uh, very easy to grab for the most part compared to steel sports in general. Um, gorgeous watch. Really is nice. And in a 2CV, I think that's just awesome. Really nice. Thank you. And I have to say again, thank you to everyone who's sent these to me. Uh, it's going to be great. We're going to get through all of these. Um, if we speak about divers, what about the Omega Ploprof? Chris London says, you know, Thomas Burnett, I was, I was kind of expecting him to submit his Ploprof into the show. But we can. Uh, it'll be nice to actually, I would like to do a video on it. I think I'll make a bookmark and save it somewhere to talk about the Ploprof because it needs to be looked at. The design of the watch is very peculiar, uh, depending on which one you're talking about, whether it's the baby Ploprof or the full size. And just what they tried to do, how they, how they managed to pull off something that was, you know, semi-successful, but also very strange. I think Jacques Cousteau really helped push the Ploprof into the modern era and uh, helped, you know, get the attention there risen. Okay, so <laughs> Clive saying enjoying, enjoying each other's pieces. It ain't that bad. <laughs> okay, so this is from Christian. Uh, I'd really, crazy, I was, this was one of the late uh, submissions. I was thinking to myself, why hasn't anyone just sent me a standard Explorer? Lots of Explorer 2s, no Explorers. 14270, classic, 36 mil. It works, I, I would say it works well on any wrist, as long as you're not nine inches and beyond. 
um, what else needs to be said about this piece. And the, the condition of this watch is something. Something about explorers in general. It's nice seeing them when they've been worn in, scratched up, scuffed, dented, dinged, because these watches really are the ones that work hard. They're made to work hard. Is that a 11420? You might be right. Uh, it's, it's a solid end link. I don't know enough about my dials to tell you. Sorry, dear artifact. I'm, it might easily be. This might be a last gen. It looks like it doesn't have Luminova or, or Tritium, so it could easily be the last generation of the Explorer line. Maybe if Christian is in the chat, he could, he could uh, tell us. But yeah, gorgeous photo as well. I love these, these simple shots. Nice contrast with the jersey and everything. What else needs to be said? Next is Cheetown. And he submitted a Timex. This is not the Q Timex. I haven't been following it enough to uh, actually know the name of this piece. Uh, I just know that it tries to take elements from the, the Blueberry. And I think he sold this as well. I read in the email. Thank you for submitting this, Cheetown. I'm sure you're in the chat. I think I saw you a second ago. Um, but uh, I, I prefer the Q Timex a little bit more. This piece seems to be more like just a cash grab from them. Something about the Q Timex was that it paid tribute to that Pepsi model of the time. Timex M79. Thank you, Tippy. Something about this piece, uh, I don't know if this is a new development or if this is something they've always had. I mean, there's even a loom pip on the, on the bezel now. Uh, they're really just trying to milk this hype factor that the, the Q Timex really pulled. Um, Cheetown saying, I sent it back. Didn't feel good. Scalping. Scalping, as in as in the the shape of the case, the polishing. I don't know. You have to expand that a little bit more. <laughs> he still has wrist hair. <laughs> well, everyone has wrist hair. So yeah, it's it's cool, but I don't think it has the same amount of uh, you know kitschiness as the Q Timex. I'll say that much. Anyway, next from Craig, another submission of a GMT. There's going to be lots of these GMTs, and you'll be blown away to realize that. Each one of these GMTs is different, whether it's a full black or it's uh, a root beer. Gorgeous. And on a, on a rubber strap, it really tones the piece down a lot, wouldn't you say? With the yellow accents, yellow gold. I don't know how sought after these two-tone GMTs are. Um, and I'm just going to get into the chat before I miss too many of you. Scalping means charging too much for it to people. Thank you, Cheetown. <laughs> Time makes Batman. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, did not pay attention to the community post or else I would have sent something with the new bracelet from N something next month. Don't worry about it. Uh, this, is, this is all an experiment. I really did not expect this to be so big. Um, I really only thought it would be a small segment to warm us up and get into the show. Uh, okay, going to carry on through. Uh, Ron the Shrink, nice to have you here. Welcome. I'd rather not wear a watch than wear a Timex. I think there's some, you know, you don't, you don't wear them seriously. For the most part, with watches in general, unless they're really heavy hitters, and there are some crazy heavy hitters in this selection that you'll be seeing just now, um, you know, you can have fun. But uh, yeah, of, of them all, I think the Q Timex is pretty entertaining, at least, just that far, I'll say. Okay, we're going to focus on the next. This is from David Coffey, which who might be in the chat, David C., and he sent me the loom of his root beer in the dark. Great. This is the only loom shot I think I received. <clears throat> Gorgeous piece. I've said so often that this modern CHNR root beer is a steal, even though it's two-tone, for, for what it offers. You know, the, the brown, the oh, I've said it enough times, the brown and the, the contrast between that and the rose gold on the wrist, it's extremely complex. The actual color palette, very complicated. But together, it makes for this great blend of something that is casual and formal, makes for an excellent wearing experience. I think it's great. Uh, Fahim, yeah, they are awesome. And there's a few more comments. Oh, and the bracelet, talking about the, the Timex. The bracelet is a hair puller if you wear it loose, I can imagine. Chromalite Loom, dear artifact, it is beautiful. And uh, they really are the best in the business. I don't know how effective, I mean, compared to BGW9, maybe someone, since we're sitting on loom at the moment, uh, how, how effective is this loom next to BGW9 Superluminova and C3 Superluminova? The, the understanding is that blue is a color that doesn't get affected 
uh, the further you go down. So if you're, if you're very deep in the darkest of depths, you will be able to see the blue spectrum easier than you would green. Um, interesting thing, you know, light theory is, is fascinating. In, it, it's crazy because in the art world and the creative space and in the science world, it's actually viewed very differently. They're almost polar opposites in the way that uh, it's explained. And that, yeah, we can get into that at a later stage, but it is, it's, uh, I love this. I think it's just great. Thank you so much, David, for sending this. Uh, the loom, gorgeous, really stands up well. And next up is Dear Artifact. And he submitted his, I mean, if you do not follow Dear Artifact on Instagram, I'm actually going to link his, his uh, channel here. I hope I get it right. Dear Artifact, uh, <laughs> hope I get it right, F-A-C-T. Go onto Instagram if you're there and follow him because he has concise, very elegant collection. I think we speak the same language for the most part when we look at pieces. We like simplicity, sans date complications, uh, easy to read watches, easy to wear pieces, value for money, some great pieces that he, that he has. Speedmaster, um, trying to remember. Also, Smith's Everest, my one of my favorite watches that I own. Okay, beautiful. I think it's, you know, the, the quality of this shot. When you have a fine camera, it gets, I mean, look at the details. It's fine, beautiful. And I think there are, there are a few Tudor bears, not as many as you think, which is great. And uh, yeah, seriously, if you're on Instagram, follow Dear Artifact. I hope I tagged his name right in the chat. Next is from Eric Bell in Loch Lomond. I hope he's watching the show. And uh, I just wanna say hi to everyone else. This is him. Uh, diving in Greece. This is a 55 millimeter diver. And for the life of me, I could not find the, the name. I couldn't read the name on the dial of the watch. But it's nice seeing a watch in action, you know. Uh, I thought this was great. And this could be something in the future, with future wrist shots, seeing it on the slopes, seeing it in the desert. It would be so nice. Okay. And next to this, Eric Bell again with a Siamese cat featuring. And this is a Seiko tuner. <laughs> and I said Seiko tuner feet. Siamese cat. So this is a PVD fully, I'm sure. I might be wrong. I don't know enough about these Seiko pieces to tell you, but this cat looks like he's staring into your soul. <laughs> okay, and next we have Fahim. Okay, now we've really, we're hitting the big, big, big time right now. So Fahim, I follow him on Instagram. Highly, cat looks happy. <laughs> really does. <laughs> looks like he wants to kill you. Okay, here we go. Heavy hitting time, FP Jean resonance. Now, if you don't follow Fahim on Instagram, follow him right now. And I'm going to share his uh, Instagram post or his Instagram name, King Flume. I hope I spelt that right. Follow this man on Instagram. If you follow anyone on Instagram, follow this man. He's a South African based in London. So we hit it off pretty well. We met each other a while back. He's a top-notch gent, and he has just picked up this piece. Uh, he's been sharing this watch day in, day out. I hope he's still here. I hope he's still watching. <laughs> uh, and he's sent me some amazing shots. He takes superb photos. Okay, so let's get into these pieces. I Okay, honestly, I don't know enough about this piece to tell you the details. For him, is, he's well-documented this watch. As far as I've gone with Jean, I've looked at the Souvron, I've looked at the Chronometer Blue, but not this piece to an extent. But I think this is the real epitome of Jean. There we go. That's what we want to see. Absolutely gorgeous. And he, he takes amazing, amazing photographs. There he is. Cheers. That's a pleasure. It's a pleasure for him. So um, he has a superb collection as well. He has a, a beautiful Speedy, um, Submariner, uh, Batgirl. He just recently picked up. But this is his real heavy hitter. This is one of the watches that really defines his... Uh, you know, collection for sure. And uh, I find it I find it quite whimsical the way the dials have been arranged. It looks like the eyes of an owl, you could say, you know, power is over the top. And as we go through, we will see the movement. Don't worry, you, you'll see the double balance. Uh, this is the solid gold movement. And I think there was talk about brass, full brass movements. This is the 18 karat gold movement that you'll be seeing, but just look at the finishing. It, it has a, a Zeitwerk, a longer Zeitwerk aesthetic with the way it's been set up, but very precise, you know, almost. And, and what I said about Jean 
in, in the discussion was that he knows how to take classical inspiration and incorporate that organic motif around it. And it seems like that's what he's done with all of his pieces. He's really defined his own um, language with the watches that he creates. Beautiful. And another wrist shot. He sent me quite a few photos, but we will get to the movement in a second. Another thing that's great about Jean that lots of other brands don't focus on, curved spring bars. Who wants to see their wrist through a strap? And uh, just one of those added things. Attention to detail is important. Contrast on the dial. I'm not even going to go to explain the details on the dial. Uh, I don't know enough. I just know that uh, you've got some guilloche. Or is it tapissery? No, it's a tapissery dial. I don't know what the finishing is on it, but beautiful champagne colors, stunning. For him, I don't even think I've said congratulations. Congratulations on this watch. I think we can all give him a round of applause. Blued hands, absolutely, Mason. I also didn't mention that. There's so much attention to detail with this watch. It would be awesome if I got photos like these from everyone, <laughs> and then we could really take in all the little details. I mean, he loves, he loves his photography. He's got a great style to his work. So really, if you're on Instagram, follow him ASAP. And there's the movement. That's what you're looking at. And it's insane. I mean, I'm not qualified in the slightest to talk about movements and finishing and handwork and all of those details, but I do know twin balance and it's an 18 karat gold movement because I can read <laughs> it's about as far as we go. Uh, it's just stunning. The symmetry, it's very hard to get symmetry on a dial. And what works so well, and the crown at the 12, of course, but Owens, that's another detail. Um, I don't know just how these two crowns operate. You've got one at the 12 up here and then one at the four o'clock. I guess they both work independently for the separate movements. Maybe this crown is for winding. Oh, I don't know enough to tell you, but really um, something about this, that the symmetry allows, the symmetry of the dials and that layout allows for this level of movement work. And this is the only movement shot that I think we will be seeing in the show, but there is an insane piece. There's one watch that really defines this whole series that you will be looking at at a later stage. Uh, it's a longer, I'll say that much. You're going to look forward to it. Okay, so for him saying winding crown at the top, thank you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> let's see. I can't, I can't pronounce your name, G G C F U G. but uh, was it a mistake to spend 150K on Omega and Panerai watches? I am definitely not the kind of person to ask with regards to retail and, and buying and selling for the most part. But uh, Panerai seems to have lost a lot. I mean, I think this is more of a sarcastic laughing joke more than anything else. Um, I don't know how it's possible to spend 115K, 150K on the two brands. Pretty funny though. Okay, getting on to the next pieces. This is from, and this is the last shot from Fahim. Next shot from founder Timeless Capital, James. He is a huge Gerard Perigo supporter. He loves the brand more than any other. And uh, he, he loves the symmetry, he loves the, the family, and he seems to have really grown attached to the pieces. Now, this man has practically every watch you can imagine. Uh, it, it's insane. Everything from vintage Rolex to modern, safe, safe's worth, worth of pieces. I don't know what I'm saying. Something about this, these pieces, uh, you'll see a few of them now. Again, the, the dressing of how well they balance the dial with regards to the balance wheels, the, the winding. Uh, I don't know how effective a small dial like this is on the piece. It's got a six-day power reserve, constant escapement. It's a very impressive watch. Highly underrated, Ron says. Yeah, And this is what uh, James says. He, he really believes that there are pieces that deserve a lot more attention. They only make about 4,000 watches a year, he says. And uh, it's a very old brand. What, 1791? Uh, once again, it's it's way over my head, which I'll need to learn about in the future. This is a PVD variant. So he, I think he did say to me that he has virtually all of them in his collection. He's someone who has really grown attached and, and this double, this triple balance bridge on the dial, it's, it's so stunning. He's grown so attached that he's, I think he's bought at least 20 of these to store and, and look after because he believes they offer tremendous value for what they are. Um, great. And this is the last that he shared with me. This is really nice. I think this is one that stood out to me the most. I don't know how good the photo is coming up, but uh, it's crazy, right? I don't know if he's on at the moment, but uh, 
yeah, I'm sure everyone will be catching up with the stream as it goes through. But they are stunning, right? Very unique and different. The open work skeleton, but at the same time, you can still read the dial very well. I think the hands are effective here. You can see the hands very easily on the dial and read them well. This also looks quite whimsical with the twin barrel. Looks like a face with an expressive mouth. Uh, let's have a look. This is from Fardheen. He sent this to me. And it's a Seiko Prospex. You wouldn't believe it, but the, the X is hidden here. Again, me and my Seikos, are we jumping, we're jumping from GP to Seiko. This is in alphabetical order. So I'm sure uh, you're going to see big leaps and bounds with the watches on display. This is a reference SPB053J1. Talk about reference numbers. I don't know the full extent of this diver, but you know that uh, when you're talking about prospects, you're talking about top of the line. Seiko for the most part. Prior to Grand Seiko, this is their top echelon. Doc Baps asking, any Vacheron overseas submitted? There wasn't. I was trying to get uh, Vaughn, Vaughn is one of our followers on the channel, uh, to submit his uh, overseas. He has an overseas chronograph, blue dial, and he's been out all day and he couldn't send it to me. But uh, sadly, there aren't any more Vacherons on the show, but there's lots. Oh, there he is. James, you just, we just, looked at your pieces. He's <laughs> saying good evening to everyone. We've just been chatting about your pieces at length. Go back by about two minutes, three minutes, and you will see your watches featured. And we talked through it briefly. And then you can catch up, just refresh the page and you can catch up with the live. This has been great though. We've, uh, we've had a good time so far. And again, I've said this enough times. Thank you all so much for submitting these pieces. The variety is insane. Vacheron Constantine, welcome. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Uh, I don't know if you're the legit Vashron Constantine, but somehow I don't believe so. So Seiko, Prospects, I'm not gonna mention the reference again. Beautiful watch, I think it's on a rubber strap. Um, and something about this piece that catches my attention is the lug design. Reminds me of the 62MA, or the 62MAS it's called, which was the first you know, official Seiko diver. They, they, they pretty much stole elements from the Blancpain 50 Fathoms for the most part, the, the Bathyscaphe in the 70s before transitioning to the, the Willard. And so the story goes. I think the lug design here, they've tried to play on that original inspiration of the Seiko diver. Cool. Okay, big heavy hitter coming up next. So be ready, everyone. Breguet 7027 from Guautan. Now, I mean, no, like the email, some of the emails were really nice and everyone's saying, I really love your show and what you're doing. This was just image sent, no, no comment, no, any of this. And I mean, look at that. So I had to look up the reference because I mean, Brege, you know, it's difficult to find Brege references, but geez, 7027. Oh, this, this has the same kind of aesthetic that you would see from the Gerard Perigo, you know, the, uh, the open work, but this is top of the line. I don't even know what these pieces retail for, but it is, it's just insane. So you have a twin, it looks like you have a, a single balance, uh, but you've got your, your big barrel in the center, small dial at the top with your power reserve. It's all you need and more. You don't have to actually turn around. Uh, it's a Breguet 7097 with retrograde. Thank you, Tippy. So it's not a 7027. I'm sure I was looking at a white gold variant or something. It's very difficult to keep up. And this is not a new piece, if, if, I'm, if I'm wrong. This is quite, uh, I think it was released in 2010 or around about that time, but it is beautiful. I mean, it is quintessential Breguet. Uh, when you want something, when you want a pocket watch maker to make a watch for you, I think this is what you want to see. Does it tell the time, Matthew? It does. You just have to have really good eyesight to see it. <laughs> Tom Austin, magnifying glass. Yeah, true. Um, Something about these dials, though, especially with you know, a Hort watchmaker, is that, like, like there's always mention about, about Lunga, for example, that you want to see the movement on display all the time. You want to wear the watch backwards. Illuminati watch, Turkey Vulture says. You know, beautiful triangle. Um, so being able to have the movement on display all the time while seeing the time pretty well, if your eyesight is good enough, ah, it's gorgeous. And I see the wristwatch experience. Left hand balance bridge could be uh, could have been made by Breguet himself. Is that so? 
I don't know the full extent of the story. Were they using parts from back in the day and incorporating them in? So this is really a heavy hitter. One of the big, big pieces shown. Uh, Fahim's uh, Jean was another one, just huge. And found the Timeless Capitals, Gerard Perigo. There's a few more pieces featured that you will see, but looks awesome. I love that pocket watch aesthetic. Stunning. Next, this is from Gavin, another Black Bay. I don't know if Gavin is watching us, but he sent this saying it's probably the, he was just seeing it in the light and thought he needed to take a photo of it. Um, beautiful play on the light. This is, I think this is the only other Black Bay that was shared as well. I'm just taking a sip and a breath because I've been talking a lot. David B saying, isn't Rolex the best? Surprisingly, there aren't many Rolexes being shared. And you will be, as we run through, you will see the variety. It's pretty amazing. It's the one thing, and I'll reiterate again, what blew me away the most and why I needed to dedicate a stream, why I want this to become a series every month, is that you guys almost seem like you were in cahoots with each other with regards to what you would send. Um, I love it. Okay. This is from George next, and I can't remember what the watch is, but, oh, awesome. So he's admitted this to me. I think he sent a few more. No, this is just from him. Another explorer on a bracelet. This one is even cleaner than the first one we saw. Uh, you can just look at the finishing on it. It's sharp as anything. It really is an underrated watch, but it's, it's getting so popular nowadays. Uh, let's see what's going on in the chat. Tippy saying the Breguet movement is modern. However, the layout was inspired by Breguet Sus Scription. Oops, <laughs> but he moved to Switzerland. So I don't know what that subscription. Uh, me in English. You know, I'm still learning. <laughs> uh, zebra, like the ETA version of the smiley text and the old school. Yeah, I agree. There aren't any smiley faces on here? But you're talking about the Tudor. This is. Oh, geez. Sorry, I wasn't even looking at it hard enough. This is an ETA version of the Tudor, and you can tell that because of the smiley text. Uh, research have moved in-house with their movements, so you can see this anymore. The smiley text and the rose really defined Tudor ever since. I'm surprised that they actually got rid of it because it was one of those elements that made the watch unique to its name. So beautiful, beautiful Explorer 2. Can't say anything wrong about this watch. I think uh, with regards to Rolex, it's very un-Rolex in the way it presents itself. And I think that's why it's gained so much attraction over the years. Um, Subtle, understated, on fair skin. Again, I'll, I'll reiterate, it looks very low key. You wouldn't expect this to be you know, something on display. It looks subtle enough to be worn every day without anyone knowing that it is in fact a Rolex and extremely legible too. You would be surprised when you're dealing with something that is white on white, what really saves it are those black accents and something that was really emphasized with the second generation Explorer, the black accents everywhere. I still wish this watch had the uh, arrow hand. Speaking of which, we're going to be looking at my favorite explorer in the world, possibly my favorite watch at this point in time. <laughs> uh, let's see, Dear Artifact saying, if I can't have a 1655 or your Tudor 1655 reissue, I'm going with a Polar Dial. Yeah, I agree. Sadly, I think I've hyped up the watch too much for it to be important. <sighs> subscription is subscription in French, Tippy says. Sounds like it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pelagos is a beauty. There isn't a Pelagos on the show, surprisingly. So it's up to you, really. As we get into this further and further, if this does expand, I need to see those watches as we keep going, you know? Uh, the more variety, the better. Next is from Hilario. This is a Cartier Ballon Bleu. And this was submitted very early on. This is actually my, check it out. He's got my channel on in the background. That's awesome. Uh, this was during, not last week's stream, but the stream before. These pieces don't get enough attention, and uh, I think I need to do a write-up about it, study it a bit more. Um, but it is cool. It does does resemble that old-school Cartier pocket watch aesthetic. Let me zoom in a bit closer. Um, in this kind of light, with the warm light, we can't really see the, the dial. For the most part, great. I must say the rounded aesthetic is something. And talking about tank, that's just the way the tank influenced Cartier's design. Just notice this. Wouldn't you say that's a bit of a faux pas? <laughs> Those two numerals so close to each other. Look at that. That is insane. It's it just takes up the whole segment on the left hand side. Interesting. Decided to use a watchmaker's four, which is also something strange. Interesting piece. Very unique to 
Hilario. And the next, this this is real heavy hitter. This is the only day date we'll be seeing on the show. Olive dial, day date. And there's something about this kind of lighting where you really get to see the olive dial in action. And we're gonna catch up with the rest of your chats. There's talk about the 1665 Great White. Wouldn't we all like a sea dweller? Um, talking more about Breguet, old Breguet gear design in every Breguet. So meaning meaning to say that the original designs have really been pushed through into the into the modern pieces. I can understand that. And it's great. I mean, something about Breguet. They, they really like to stick to their roots and incorporate the elements that they've always used, like coin edging on the cases. And they invented most of it too. So, you know, it's great. Uh, Junior Johnson, welcome. I did receive an email. I've had over 50 emails this week alone, I'm sorry, in the last 24 hours, not this week. <laughs> and I haven't been replying to anyone. But uh, yeah, I will reply to you as soon as possible. Okay, so this piece, day date, I mean, at 39 mils, 40 mils, 41. I don't think it's the Wimbledon dial, Jimmy. I'm not well versed enough to tell you that, but uh, this is quite the epitome of the day date, at least to me. Roman numerals uh, with uh, the, the white gold. I'm sure it's white gold. I don't even know if this is, it is a white gold case. Um, it looks so toned down, simple, but we know that it is a real top tier dress watch for the most part. Dress sports watch, you can wear this everywhere. And I think Founder Time is Capital said that he really likes Olive. There's something about Olive dials on watches that really does speak to us. And of course, we know just how radiant these dials are. Uh, it's also on par with the Hulk Submariner and the Z Blue Milgauss. We know just how well these dials react in the light. NATO, welcome. We've had a good show so far running through lots of references, and we've still got lots to go. Let's see. Hilario, this is now from James. Next piece. Sea Dweller. This is probably one of the most sought after Sea Dwellers that we can look for nowadays. It is the reference. I'm not even going to try and botch the reference. Uh, it's, it's a 116600, I hope, I think, round about there. The first real transition of the Sea Dweller jumping to ceramic bezel, but it had a 40 millimeter case, no Cyclops lens. That's how you can easily identify it. And this really was the sweet spot watch. It's probably one of the, uh, someone saying one of the best divers, 40 millimeters Mason, yeah. This is probably one of the rarest sea dwellers out there because it was only made for like two years. And I think it's just awesome. It, it really takes the, and the best thing is compared to the Submariner, it actually has a smaller presence for the most part. Let me pull it back a bit so you get his wrist on the screen as well. Um, but what happened, and something that blew me away, talking about the 43 mil sea dweller that's always spoken about, the way that the, the watch has been worked with and the way we saw the Cyclops lens integrated to the piece, I noticed after someone took off, I highly recommend going onto Google now, typing in 43 millimeter sea dweller, no Cyclops. And you will see that they have still used the same movement on the watch. And this date window, is pushed so far in that it would just look so awkward without the Cyclops there. So instead of it being this quote unquote rampant improvement for them to use this on their crystal, they really did it to hide the bizarre placement of the date window because they used the same sized movement on a 43 millimeter watch. And you can notice just how there's the space between the two areas. It's still, it looks, it looks great here. Have a look at the 43 mil without the the cyclops you will laugh your head off and that's the actual answer to why they incorporated the cyclops i need to do a video on it because it's well worth highlighting for everyone so it's not so much the date window size it's the placement it's it's the offsetting of the date window still gorgeous watch and after this piece disappeared the sea dweller lay dormant then the deep sea arrived with uh, a couple of variations and then we got the modern sea dweller fahim can't unsee it I hope, yeah, just have a look. If anyone hasn't, uh, did I send you the pic for him? I don't think, no, I don't think you sent it to me. I don't know what I was doing one day, but I thought just to have a look at the watch without the Cyclops because that's how we want to see a sea dweller, right? For the most part, I'm sure people like. Anyway, next from James. This is James's first submission, beautiful sea dweller, and he's got some cool pieces. Oh, yes, beautiful root beer. And this, 
I would say is a real watch enthusiast watch for the most part. It does not appeal to lots of people. It really appeals to those of us who likes root beer on their piece. You know, the brown dial is just so expressive and exciting. And this is the way the root beer should be represented, in my opinion. I think that contrasting custard and caramel bezel just looks the business. Uh, no nipple dial. We have full loom. I, I don't know if this is a redial. Uh, the, the loom looks great on this piece. So maybe this was a, a redial at some stage. Um, I, I would like to see this piece on a two-tone jubilee. But again, I think it's just, it's such a character. It really is that watch that epitomizes its time period a lot. And uh, okay, I'm gonna catch up with you guys in the chats as much as possible. Um, let's see, Junior Johnson just came over from Just Horology, trying to support both channel sucks. <laughs> yeah, Junior, we, you know, please, by all means, you guys don't have to stay here. This is just, uh, it's just been a, a crazy day, a couple of days putting this together and it turned into a series. I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am. Um, it, it gives me a break. It's nice to to just appreciate what everyone else is sharing for a change. Um, so vintage root beer, great looking piece. And it's one of those watches that really appeals to me. Coming from South Africa, one of my favorite stones is the tiger's eye. We get huge tiger's eye stones. And uh, I used to collect them. And I just love it. The way they play in the light really calls back to that, that lifestyle of mine. Oh, it's gorgeous. Next from James. Oh, yes. Now, I think he told me that he sold this watch. I might be wrong, I can't remember to the full extent, but this is a master compressor chronograph. And I believe JLC needs to return to the master compressors because these watches really are so unique in just the, the general sports category. And they're, they're only around for a short period of time, but these watches really did stand out. One of the watches that appeals to me the most is the master compressor Memovox. But I just love the, the idea that these crowns have that twist to unlock. If you don't know, uh, white, you're, I think Tim Mosso says, white, you're right, red, you're dead. You turn this uh, 90 degrees, no, 180 degrees, and you'll get a red arrow telling you that the crown is unlocked. It's a simple, elegant feature. And the design of this, I need to make a video on this piece and just com master compressors in general. The design of these crown guards, the way that they're actually crown guards integrated with the locking mechanism. I hope you can see it okay. Oh, I think it's superb. And then we move to the dial. Typical JLC format, 12 and 6. Uh, the way the batons have been integrated, not getting in the way of the sub dials, working their way around them. Easily legible at a glance. This is a watch you can take into the water and use. That's no, just great. And uh, I've said a lot about this piece. Okay, not sure I can take your channel seriously after you reveal the 42 Explorer. Yeah, NATO, it was a long time ago. I'll say that much. Um, I have matured over time and I've started to learn about being more in the gray area when it comes to talking about watches. Look how huge it is. Yeah, it is pretty big. Um, I have uh, slowly but surely learned how to present a lot better. I hope uh, if you look at the most recent videos, you might see that I'm a little bit more open to looking at both sides of the coin instead of just my opinion. I think it's the worst thing when someone just shares one direct opinion and doesn't really offer a counter argument. As much as I try, you know, it's difficult to appeal to everyone. I could say that much. You never can. Uh, you know, if 1% agrees with you, then that's, that's okay. <laughs> uh, you know, we all have opinions at the end of the day. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I really, I really enjoy this. This has always been a time, especially these live shows, where we can sit back, kick back, share our thoughts on various things. And the community engagement is superb. This really helps uh, us look at what we like. Just remember, everyone who has submitted these watches watches the show, follows the live streams. And for that reason, we can just get to appreciate you in the comments, whoever you are who sent whatever else. That's just superb. I think it's really, really cool. And Cheetown saying no more Parnas. So Parnas watches I got into because I just, I like the idea that I could get a Panda chronograph. They're very well made for the most part. I've sold all of them off. Um, I don't wear them anymore. I've really lessened my collection down to basically two, three pieces. Um, but a mechanical quartz chronograph, I don't think you can go wrong with that when it comes to everyday wear, smash it around. They're cheap as chips. I've actually recommended them to a few people who are interested in the Panda Daytona. I've also worn a Panda Daytona years before 
uh, this, this crisis going on in the marketplace. And uh, the aesthetic is good enough to be unique, but not taking the idea wholesale, if you know what I mean. Okay, going to catch up with all of you. And let's get to the next piece. This is from Jay, and it's a Glasuta original Panomatic Lunar. This watch was sent in twice, but this was the best photo, and I think it's, it's lining up with the longer one in a way. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy the longer one that's going to be on show just now. This piece has been asked about often, and uh, it's, it's great value for money. I don't know the full extent of just how they compare with regards to movement quality and finishes. Again, I'm not one of those people to tell you about how well watches are made for the most part, or well, movement quality. Um, but there's something what I really like the most about Glasuta Original is the way they incorporate the date window at the four o'clock position. I find it very unique. The sparsity on the dial also says something about high horology for the most part. It's a beautiful photo. I hope you get to see this in, in high res. I mean, I've got a moon phase indicator, and I do like the idea that when the moon phase highlights the days of the week, you get to see just where the moon would be relative to the day of the week. Glashuta, glass shooter, form and glasses. <laughs> I'll never get it right. You know, I've uh, I've learned Dutch in the past. Afrikaans is a variant of Dutch. It's kind of like Dutch slang. And, uh, you know, there's lots of things that you take, like the kh in, in accent and, yeah. So I'm not even going to try. I'm, I, butcher, I butcher the name every single time, but who knows. Gorgeous looking watch. I think the balance is there. Something about that split where this watch takes up, what, a good, I would say, two-thirds of the dial. I don't know. What would you say? Three-quarters of the dial. Still legible enough and easy enough to read at a glance. Just say G-O, Bud Owens. Yeah, I agree. Um, also love the subdial, the fact that you can actually read it. And it's, it's fairly legible for the most part. If it was on your wrist, it would probably be about that size. I'm looking at it at a big screen, so I might have to zoom in a little bit closer. Still, I think the placement, they took the inspiration for this piece from the longer one, and they've done a great job with it. I know it's, it's incredibly popular on the market. Next, we've got a SBGK005 from Jason. This is a recent pickup of his. This is also quite a late submission, if I remember right. But uh, mm, look at that dial. We know the Grand Seiko does the dial right, does it justice. Beautiful brushed finishing, power reserve, balance. This is quite a new piece to the family. Don't uh, quote me on that. Case design, the lugs, the proportions, very, very interesting. Has that uniqueness. Grand Seiko with their cases. When, when The next time I do a Grand Seiko video, I would like to focus on their cases more. The squared off elements really shows what they're capable of doing. And of course, the dials. I mean, if I zoom in all the way, this looks almost like, what would you call it? Outward brushing. How, how Grand Seiko does the finishing on these pieces, hard to understand, really. It's, it's an art form all to itself. And uh, I'm sure it is a spring drive, Meeson. I think the only time they incorporate spring drives, or sorry, power reserves, is when they have a spring drive movement involved. Might be wrong, maybe, I don't know, I don't know. This is all a learning experience. Of course, we're looking at varied watches today, so I might be off on a lot of points, but it is just gorgeous, beautiful watch, really epitomizes. I think when you want Grand Seiko, you want them for the dial, and you want them for the spring drive. I think those are the two aspects that really makes this brand important. But of course, pros the Prospects line now incorporates spring drive as well, right? So, yeah. Uh, in general, Seiko, it's, it's a whirlpool of watches and details. Uh, Jason saying the GS is manual wind. And this could be you, Jason Parton. I might be wrong. I do not know. Okay, getting into it. Love the balance. I think that asymmetry is, well, I'd actually say symmetry on the dial is something important. Uh, there's no no waste of batons on this. Oh, it just looks great. Really is nice. Next from Jesse, a napkin. Haven't seen this piece before featured on the show. One thing I, I've noticed this watch featured often on a few channels. I like the idea that they take the snowflake elements to heart and actually use them all the way through. With regards to the dial, squared off plots, squared hands, and the loom on these pieces. The, the Luminova, uh, they have it all over the bezel, all over the crown, lots of little details. 
I think it's very interesting. And the dials as well, 70s-esque dial design. Uh, Skyflake, there's talk about other Seikos and everything else. I'm, I'm just trying to uh, catch up with what's going on as much as I can. Uh, Omega style bracelet, Mr. Petrol says, is it? I must say one thing that I've critiqued with regards to micro brands and homage watches for the most part, the way that end links are integrated with the pieces. This extra long segment is actually quite a shoddy job for the most part. Uh, there needs to be more attention to just how these end links work. And I don't know if that's just down to manufacturing, but uh, sometimes they can really push themselves out way too far and make the wearing experience different. Uh, there's always something about a bracelet that when it actually fits to your wrist neater, uh, it wears better and you tend to wear it a lot more. So it's cool. I think the, the dial is something that really stands out the most. Uh, very interesting blend, 70s, like I said, 70s elements. Next to Jim. What a Jim share. Oh, yes. Oh, Jim, thank you so much for ripping, tearing my heartstrings. This is a great selection, black on black GMT and an Explorer 2, 1655. Now, as we know, 1655 is the watch that I yearn for, but as a pairing, Seeing these two watches together, how great does that make for a collection, right? Double wristing. Yeah, I wouldn't say, no, not double, single wristing, double watching Orange Hand. Speaking of which, Orange Hand, he is the uh, the, the mentioned, is it a he or a she? The real uh, MVP with regards to these pieces. I think it's just, it's a, such a nice pairing as two watches. Um, so, so Han's asking, what's the topic for tonight? <laughs> I hope, you've, I hope you've just joined. Uh, we have been running through a huge selection of watches that you've all sent to me. And it was going to be a small segment, but ended up becoming a dedicated stream because the variety of watches that you've sent, I hope you're seeing um, so unique and different and what you wouldn't expect, I would say. You, you would think that there would be 50 Speedmasters and 50 Tudors and 50 Rolexes, and that's about it. Considering uh, the watches that you generally see spoken about all the time, me included. I talk about them a lot. But the watches that we've seen so far, and we'll get through more. Don't worry, we've got Zodiacs and some more Doxes and all sorts, and some Zins coming up. So love this pairing. And as we know, this GMT is now very sought after because it was discontinued. And I just love this watch. And the next picture, of course, he has to rub my nose in it. The Explorer 2 on a NATO strap. I think it's just great. I speak so much about this piece and I speak so highly about it. Uh, it feels like the value of this watch is just climbing higher and higher in the on the gray market. Okay, yeah, the artifact, 1655 is gorgeous. Okay, double fisting. Um, male end link, straight edge end links. Forbin. Yeah, I must say some, some companies, especially micro brands, don't pay enough attention to the way end links integrate with their cases. Um, but it's just beautiful. And what does is, what is the artifact say? The shop does a great job of showcasing the elegance of vintage Rolex design in contrast to the modern heft of current. Very well said. And that's it. Hey? We, we, we look at the super case relative to the, this is a four digit reference case. So this would be 1675 era GMT. You really don't need that much metal to get the watch to stand out. And another thing that made this watch so cool is that it, it stands out so nicely. It's a 39.85263 millimeters in size, but because of the dial, the highlights, the colors, the, the racing, the racing dial-esque layout on the minute track stands out so well on the wrist, really has a great presence compared to the fat GMT. Uh, still a great looking watch. And I'm sure most predictions are saying that they're going to be tapering down the cases. It's crazy just how and the market has changed all of a sudden, and now the attention is moving more towards what we liked from the older watches. Okay, so let's see. Um, Joseph saying, down to two finalists for one watch collection, JLC Black Polaris, Zenith Defy Blue Dial. Can you mention this? We're going to actually get quite close to the end of these pieces eventually. I did mention, a, I don't think I mentioned a Polaris, just off the top of my head, the Zenith Defy, I would go for the Polaris, honestly, if it was me. I think JLC 
as an everyday wearing watch is better. The Zenith Defy, I'm imagining it's the, no, it's not the chronograph. It would just be the standard piece with very skeletonized. Uh, I find Zenith Defy pieces in general, the, the legibility is quite off. Um, it's not as easy to read, but it is unique. I think the Defy line has too much of Jean-Claude Beaver's DNA on it. And uh, if, if it was me, I would go more towards a watch that, I mean, the Polaris, you, you can read it so easily, it has that beautiful layout, the beautiful quarters. That would be my choice. Um, I'm sure everyone else can reply and give you their opinion on the piece. Uh, watch Lounge, thank you for checking in. It's been, we've been running for 75 minutes and the watches on show blew me away to such an extent that I had to run a show around them. Okay, moving to the next. This is from Jimmy. So we've had two from Jim and from Jimmy. Steinhardt Ocean One. And this, I, I think it's the first generation. I don't know. This is one of the first watches I ever bought. I love the mill sub inspired elements. And uh, I, if this is a first generation, it's crazy just how much they are going for now. Uh, if you don't know much about Steinhardt, I, I really enjoy just when it comes to these watches, uh, you know, I put mine in bleach. I bleached the bezel. I really, I didn't like the case design. So I took a, a grinder to it <laughs> and tapered it in. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit crazy like that. You know, industrial design in general, you, you like to get hands on with things. But people do, people do seem to like this piece a lot in the community because it has that that mill sub-esque inspiration behind it. Must say, it's nice to see a watch that follows through with the mill sub inspirations, with the fully graduated bezel, uh, the arrow hand. They're, they're superb watches. I mean, it's an ETA. It works like a dream. The one I wore, um, wore to the gym for what well over two years, every, every single day, uh, in the swimming pools, saunas, no problems, no gasket leakage, no steam inside the glass, worked well. Okay. Moving on. Also, I think the faux patina, they've done quite well here. It's not so yellow that it's jarring, but it's not, you know, orange. It looks quite believable to an extent. Also, C3 Luminova, excellent value for money for what you're getting. These, you can find these pieces all over eBay secondhand for what you can get. Okay, Kevin. Now, I do not know the full extent of what this watch is. Kevin just sent this to me, but I feel like this is a Chopard Milli Miglia. And maybe someone can tell me in the chat if that is the case. But it's a, it's a GMT chronograph, very unique watch. And he even has it on a racing strap. I don't know if that's how the watch comes. I don't know enough about Chopard to tell you those details. But it's great seeing that variety, right? It's just, it's just cool. And uh, okay, I'm just slowly but surely. <laughs> Watchbox sure does bow at the altar of FP Jean, but Owen says. Now, they seem to they seem to really hype them up. It's interesting how Watchbox, when it comes to those, I, I love watching weekend watches and watches of the week, or whatever they call it, because we get to see such a varied selection of pieces. But it's crazy just how the watches that they show sometimes often enough line up with the watches that were premiered on the live show a week before. There's something in the back of my mind saying that someone from Watchbox is watching this and taking some notes. So it's great. If someone's there, I'd love to meet you and your team if you are Watchbox chatting. I'd love to meet Tim, have a one-to-one -one across the table. Uh, he is a human encyclopedia when it comes to watches. I do think sometimes he needs to take a breath because, I mean, he talks nonstop. I don't know how he does it and still functions for the rest of the day. This is crazy. Okay, next piece. Really enjoyed. Thank you so much for sending this, Kevin, the show part. I need to discuss show part more over time. And uh, yeah, it's nice. It has that very heavily sports inspired elements. Don't know so much about the bezel. I'd have to look at it more. I think this is a full ceramic case. Um, might be wrong there. Moving next, this is from KK. So the username was KK. And the watch he sent me is a LUP XP show pod. Now this watch has been asked about often on the show. And it's one of those dress watches. I wish we got some more shots of this piece because it's great. Of course, he's in a plane, so it's a bit difficult. But there's something about this watch. There's a few variants of this piece. And uh, this is a show pod as well. I don't, I don't know the difference between LUC show pod. I, I think it's maybe the, the latest rendition, the latest family of show pod watches. But it's that, once again, simple balance of the 369, 12, 
Heath Blued. Uh, that's just cool. Really nice. Love that contrast on the on the wrist of the shirt that he's wearing. And uh, it's a watch that I think we should pay more attention to. Really nice dial, Thomas Burnett says. Legible, absolutely. Looks almost like a linen dial. Oops, <laughs> that's the next piece coming up. Uh, we're getting back to it. We're getting back to it. Uh, the ma magic mouse seems to get in my way sometimes. Looks almost like a linen dial. I don't know how well you can see it on the screen. Heat bluing. I don't know if this is heat bluing, but it's amazing how rich they got that that color, right? Gorgeous. So thank you very much for sending this, KK. I didn't get your full name in the email. This is now from Matt. Matt, oh, oh, what else needs to be said? This has to be one of the best photos that I've received for the show. Zodiac Seawolf, look at those colors. Look at that bracelet. It, it, you know, really, of all the watches that we've seen, so well, but I've had a look at in this selection, this one wins the show with regards to color, contrast, finish. These pieces, Zodiac Seawolf, I feel like I should be getting myself one of these watches because it just speaks my language. Orange highlights, navy blue, just look at the details. I hope you can see this well. It looks like it has a, a sapphire bezel as well. Black date window. They just know what they're doing. They're fantastic, but Owen says, I really I think it's something else. So this watch is going to stay on the screen for a while as I look through the comments. Beautiful. Zodiac, I, I know Clockbait just looked at a Zodiac. Clockbait is a lot of fun. I've been watching some of their stuff, and I enjoy the, the banter between the two guys. I think it's nice having a channel. Of course, the way I try and present the page, it's very like hardcore, educational, and formal for the most part. But I like that that freedom of just chatting about what they get and you know talk about controversial stuff in a very flippant way and it's cool i love it so i recommend you have a look at their stuff uh, they're also on instagram and i can actually let's see if i can tag them if you're also on if you're on instagram i think that is their tag clockbait highly recommend you have a look at their stuff they share great content and it's entertaining and i think with our community, entertainment is important. Uh, some, you know, there's purists on both sides, and sometimes we need to take things less seriously and just enjoy. Um, yeah, and for him saying, "Remember the Zodiac that Cam bought? Oh, I loved it." And he was he was pushing it on me. It was he, I think he wanted me to get it for like a thousand pounds. That was what he was offering. A beautiful piece, right? And it had and just to uh, get into that detail, Cam from Craft and Tailored again. Get off the stream now. Follow Craft and Tailored on YouTube, Instagram. Cam is a gent. I spoke to him this week. We had a we had a chat over FaceTime, and uh, I might be writing some articles for them very soon, which would be a lot of fun. But he brought a Bakelite Pepsi GMT in to London when he arrived, and it had a stretch rivet bracelet. It felt like you were wearing this this time capsule from the fifties. So Zodiac. Have a look at Zodiac watches in general. On to, go onto eBay, have a look. Very affordable for the most part. And the watch is just sublime. This is an example of how a brand takes great attention and focus and looks at their roots in more detail. I hope, I hope I've gotten some of your comments. I'm sure I've, I've spoken a lot today. I should totally get a Super Seawolf there, yeah, I agree. I, th I think it's one of the watches on my mind. Whether or not I, I like the watermelon, you know, that bright green one or not, don't know. But this watch, sent from Matt, this has got to be one of the best wrist shots of the show by far, just because of the lighting, the color, the watch itself, orange highlights, sheer brilliance. I've just noticed something in my gushing about this piece. There are no numerals on the bezel apart from the 30. That might be quite distracting. Yikes. <laughs> See what happens when you get a little bit over overexcited. When you talk about dive bezels, you want it to be very legible, easy to use at a glance. And you can read the 15 minutes, but then when it comes to the, the, the 20, 25, 30, it gets a little bit difficult. So that's one thing I'll strike against the name, but just the watch itself looks beautiful. NS something. I don't know if you're still on the show, but you're up next. You sent me, I think Thomas Burnett actually sent these to me. Moser Pioneer. Now, in something, uh, he also would like a, a uh, review of his collection. 
which I hope to do in the future. I'm very waylaid with, with videos as it is and discussions and write-ups and everything in between. But uh, he has a superb collection, a combination of JLCs and Moses for the most part. And mm, Leia, your, your Credor hasn't been seen. Oh, uh, no. Well, if that's the case, we have to do it next month. <laughs> I, you know, I tried my best to be as diligent as I could with the emails. There were so many flying in, and I might have just missed one highlight. I do remember you sent me a Credor last week, and I mustn't, maybe I didn't save it or something. I do remember receiving a Credor. <sighs> Apologies. Really tried my best to get as much as possible, but, uh, you know, something slips eventually and I'm missing from everyone else. A dear artifact saying the bezel reminds me of the 50 fathoms, talking about the Zodiac, I agree. Um, okay, let's see what else is going on. Going back to Moza, it's another thing that's important about this watch is that the bracelet is aftermarket, and as we'll see in the next shot, of course he has a Fender bass in the background. Look at all the pedals, oh geez. Uh, whoever else is into electric guitars, I mean, this is, this is nuts. I can't imagine what all of these do. I am quite the electric guitar lover myself. Love guitars. Got into guitar at about 2012, self-taught. I played the piano a lot and thought, no, I needed to take up guitar and learn. I stole a guitar from a, uh, a guy in my boarding house. I would literally sneak into his room every day and uh, keep it until he came and asked for it. He was a couple of years below me, so you know, you know how it is when you're a senior. Beautiful bracelet on this piece. And watch originally came stand on leather, but I think something about the bracelet really finishes it off well. It makes it very unique. You don't ever see Moses on bracelets. And uh, this, this H-style ladder looks great. Again, end links. The thought that the end link needs to articulate makes for a much more comfortable wearing experience and uh, detail. Moser is known for their Fumé dials, uh, but this simple piano black finish just as cool. Awesome. Okay. Base, base, Moser, anti, it's a, it's a, what's it, a pioneer anti, I don't know if it's anti-magnetic or not tau, but it is a Moser pioneer and nice and clean. Love it. I mean, that's, it is, it does epitomize what we see from Moser for the most part. Okay. Jumping through interesting links. Yeah. Laddered links. Next we're jumping to orange hand. Don't know if you're still here. But Orange Hand, oops, Magic Mouse. Orange Hand submitted a, another explorer. This is his Orange Hand that he loves wearing. Beautiful photo, by the way. Let's just get the full shot in. You've got a lighthouse. I mean, that's the way you represent a wrist shot, right? Beautiful. And uh, there's something about this piece that speaks to me a little bit more than the white dial polo. You know, the, po the, the, the Explorer 2, we know as a watch that... Uh, really is defined by the polar nowadays. This is a lot more understated. But again, the proportions, up to your opinion, whether you like it or not. So, cool looking piece. Justin Bailey, I have a Fender Custom Shop 51, no caster relic. Wow, really, really? Um, geez, I, um, I scraped together some money and bought a American Special Stratocaster, which I then stripped down and completely refinished. Uh, redid the neck, went so far to actually get water slide custom shop decals to put on it. And I made it, it just sings. Uh, Texas Special pickups, super hot. And uh, reversed the one at the, at the base on the, on the bridge. So now it's not the bridge. It's been a while since I've played guitar. Anyway, beautiful. Uh, really like this piece. Very understated, I'll say again. One that you can wear every day, not attract much attention because it doesn't exactly look like a Rolex. This one, you would probably get more attention because it, it looks like a Submariner if, if someone is versed in the in the format of that styling. But uh, the, the fact that they kept the orange hand and they pushed it through with these newer references, awesome. Next, from Reed. I think Reed is watching. He's sent in a few, I oh, love, the, love the quality of these pieces. So this is your, your Oyster Perpetual blue dial. I think Clive, Watch Wrangler has one of these pieces, and Clive should be featured here somewhere. Hmm, I'm pretty sure I put his picture in. We'll see. Catching up with the rest of the chats. I'm speaking so much tonight. 
That's Peggy's Cove Lighthouse near where I live. Dear Artifact, fantastic. So there we go. You can connect up with Orange Hand if he's still watching. I'm sure he is. Uh, you guys can hook up and share each other's watches. Great. It's always nice bringing people together in the community. Oh, I love it. So I think there's something about the Blue Dial Explorer-esque elements that really makes this piece unique. I don't know if it's a 30, it looks like a 34 mil. I'm saying that because of the case and the, the bezel. The case looks quite squared off. I mean, what else do you need when it comes to a Rolex watch, one watch that represents the brand? You know, looks great, right? Uh, so Reed, I'm sure he's here somewhere, but uh, if he's not, mm. next, number two. And look at that dial. I mean, let's just get really close into that blue. Rolex and their dials. Now, some, some that I think we speak about the most, the green of the Hulk and the blue of the Milgauss, the date just the, the day date that we saw earlier, they all use this same effect. I think the finishing on this dial is a little bit different. 36 mil OP. Thank you, Clive. I think the finishing on this dial is a little bit different to what we've seen from the Milgauss, but still lovely watch. And it really does sum up what you would like to see with a Rolex watch. You know, Rolex doesn't always have to be about sports. Uh, this looks like a piece that really plays on the idea of those 30s era, um, lost for words, oyster case, the uh, cushion cases. No, not cushion cases. Wake up. What am I trying to say? The what? The oh, Anyway, lost my train of thought. This is a piece he's been trying on. And IWC, look at that photo. Thank you so much for the photos, Reed. These are beautiful. IWC Spitfire pays tribute to the Mark 11. <sighs> trying to remember all my references, or the Mark 15. And does a great job. This is very recently released. Uh, they've done some cool things with the, with the strap. The, the nylon now has leather underneath or rubber integration underneath. But for the price, these watches are going for bubble back, Dr. J. Thank you. I just lost my train of thought there. I'm speaking so much. This watch is eerily reminiscent of bubble back styling in a way because the case is so nicely squared off and squat and short. Looks like your original oyster bubble back cases that we remember from all those years ago. So the strap, I think what divides opinion on this watch and what I don't really like is that they're pricing this watch so highly and not giving you a full bracelet or something. It would, be, it would be nice to see this watch on a beads of rice or, I mean, IWC has a great series of bracelets that they've used in the past. Beautiful pieces. If you follow, if you, if you have a man and his watch, one of the IWCs featured in that book is on a full bracelet and it looks beautiful. Um, but this, this watch is gorgeous. I, I did a video on this piece. The um, rail dial, not the rail dial, the minute track, the, the size of the minute track relative to the numerals, it uses up the space so well. Even the lug length is, is great. It, it keeps those Flieger-esque aesthetics, but looks like a casual everyday wearing watch. Something about, something about these watches that are inspired by Fliegers, but have field watch motifs behind them as well. It's great. I think it's such a nice uh, collection together. And we'll see another superb field watch in a second near and dear to my heart, which we will get to. Uh, so I'm just going to bring this in closely so you can have a good look. And I'll just catch up with some of the chats going on here because I've missed so many. I've spoken way too much. <laughs> the AR coating seems bluer than most. Yeah, it seems like they, they do have quite an emphasis of their AR. I don't know if it's a double coating or if it's just underneath the glass. I, I really have this, this pet peeve of AR coating. I, uh, I lose a lot of interest in watches if they do have bright, bright, um, and that's why I seem to like acrylic a lot on watches because you don't get any worries with the glare. And most of the time when you look through the acrylic, it doesn't even look like you have glass on the watch. We need more acrylic watches, man. Okay. Catching through what else is going on. Talking about IWC. Am I the only one who thinks it's overpriced? As Zonda says, no, you're not. IWC in general, uh, I think they've gone through their leaps and bounds recently. I don't know how well they're doing in the marketplace. The, the pilot family seems to be the watches that they really try and promote, but they brought out some superb watches. I don't know if, um, if Ron the Shrink is still watching, but he has a 5002, which has to be one of the best Flieger-inspired 
modernized pieces today. This this feels more like a field watch inspired piece instead of a Flieger inspired watch. I hope you understand what I mean when I say that. The proportions, the scale, the, the use and placement of the hands and the numerals does have Flieger-esque elements, but then you have the field style case. I think that's what they were going for. They were looking more at the, the, the Mark 11, IWC Mark 11 as the inspiration behind it. Next from Reed. Uh, I think this is, I hope this is Reed. I'm pretty sure I got this right. This is, he, he says to me, one of his best wrist shots and it's a Seiko Alpinist. I did a video on this quite recently and it's a beautiful photo. Reed, you've shared some gorgeous photos. If you're going to be watching this in future, if you're still here, I don't know. Um, lots of chat about IWC. It's cool, it's great. Uh, Tom Austin, if you're still watching from Hong Kong, you are a legend. I don't know how you do it. Okay. So, and thank you for joining, Tom. Beautiful looking watch. Uh, I've, I said in the video, I try to be quite on the fence with it because I don't understand it fully. The Alpinist to me, you know, it feels like a sports watch, that the name gives it that rugged, you, you want it to be something to take and beat up on the mountains or on the Alpines. But then you see it and you think, it looks like a dress watch, you know, that, that blend of the two parts. Uh, I'm not so much of a fan of the, the text, the, the numeral, I'm sorry, the text integration on the compass bezel next to the, the placement on the dial. Uh, and also the color scheme is a little bit off for my taste. At least that's what I said in the video. Your experience may vary, but it is a cult classic on the platform. It seems like so many people love this watch. And uh, now that Seiko has just brought out this watch under their prospects line and asking way more money for these pieces, It'll be interesting to see just how the demand goes. Rooted Rotor, welcome. We've been going for 95 minutes and what a show. Jeez, uh, I've really enjoyed this. The selection of pieces, sublime. Okay, catch up what's going on here. Um, hey, I was out for a bit, rewind, reround, saw my watch <laughs> in something. Yeah, you just, you missed it by just a few clicks, your pioneer. And that's thanks to Thomas. Thomas sent me your piece, the photos of your piece. Okay. Beautiful. Next, Ryan Zelos. Zelos watches, another brand I need to look at in more detail. He sent me three photos of this piece and uh, the dial finishing looks like a fingerprint. And everyone, don't go yet. Don't go just yet because some of the great watches are still to come, I promise you. Again, this is alphabetical order, so uh, I didn't have any part to play in the way that uh, everything's placed. I've tried to link it to your names as best as possible. Beautiful looking watch. I think that fingerprint style really does make it clean. And notice, I've just noticed this now, the batons are actually recessed beneath. Does this mean that it is a sandwich dial? Really, really nice. I like it. And that effect on the dial, I've never seen before. It really does look like a fingerprint, doesn't it? Uh, keeps that, and, and again, the, the bezel, why more brands don't give that ghosted bezel effect? I don't know. The, uh, the way it blends with the case, the presence on the wrist, uh, Cheetown asking me, would I consider a Vostok, another brand I haven't studied in the slightest. The, the designs of the watches really don't speak to me much, but uh, maybe I could invest some time into learning about them a bit more. I know that they are very prevalent and important historically. So, Komandorsky, I'll try my best to uh, to look it up. I'll, once again, what's nice about the shows is that I can I can catch up with everything that you've asked me and, you know, have a look at new topic ideas. Great video, uh, great photo from Ryan. Great watch. It's, it's so nice to see the variants of pieces from, from Zodiacs to Zelos to Seiko to uh, GO and everything. It really does look like a fingerprint. I don't know if that's what they intended. It looks amazing. It has that turbine wind effect. I don't know enough about Zelos to give you anything really clear, but uh, it'd be nice to know if this is in fact a sandwich dial or not. I think sandwich dials need to be looked at more because they really are quite underappreciated. Okay, Thomas B. This is not Thomas Burnett, this is another Thomas, sharing his Zin. Oh, Zin 556 anniversary. Wow, okay, uh, let's, let's see, he's given me a few photos, but this watch, uh, it's, it's got a, a rhodium finished dial, and look at it, look at the, the photography, the photo. I, I have a feeling that this Thomas is on Instagram, uh, but I might be wrong, and I need to figure out 
who this Thomas is because the photos are just sublime. So there was a, there was a question asking me about Zen watches, but uh, yeah, I must have missed it. You know, it just the chat gets mad at times. But he really tried to capture the light. You can see it has an AR coating, a beautiful bracelet. We had a look at a Zen earlier from Cedar Canoe, and uh, just love the blend. And this really does sum up Zen. I need to do more discussions around Zinn as a brand. They have so many pieces that the value for what they offer is immense. And you're getting German made watch. And what's nice is that they like to stick to that Pilot S-esque aesthetic. Very, very unique brand in the way they uh, present themselves. <laughs> Catching up. I, yeah, again, I'm talking so much. And the picture's great, right, Thomas? I'm going to zoom in a bit closer so we can get a look at that dial. So anniversary piece from 1961-2016. Uh, commemorative piece to this exact watch, if I'm not wrong. Don't know enough about Zinn to tell you that, but beautiful piece. Love the crown guards. Very clean. And it's just so nice seeing what type of movement in that thing, Richard Rota asks. Don't ask me. The reference is the Zinn 556 anniversary. So have a look at it, Google. I'm sure you'll be able to have a good look. And honest tool watches, I think Mason describes it perfectly. That's the way Zinn seems to really show themselves. And a few pieces, the Zinn 104, the Zinn 103, I don't know what reference I talk about often, but the use of lighting and contrast and, and line weight, white and black line work is so important. It's going to be a great video coming out in a week or two. I compare a Longines Big Eye against the new Breitling 765. And great, because in the video, you'll be able to see just how these two brands have focused on line weight and use of uh, contrast on their dials. Great. Thomas Burnett is up next, and I specifically requested Thomas to send me this, his Kermit Submariner. This, I think, you know, in hindsight, after doing your collection review, Thomas, uh, you need to keep this watch because it is you at this point. And what's so great is that this is the only five-digit reference sub that was sent to me. And this is the only Kermit. There was no Hulks sent to me. That's just gorgeous. Crappy Luxury, Globemaster. You'll see a Globemaster just now. Very, very gorgeous piece. And as we go, uh, it's just so great. I'm just catching up with everyone else here. Uh, Mark P., Great to have you here. This has been an awesome show. There's still uh, quite a lot to come, actually. There's, there's a few more pieces to show. And trust me when I say that we haven't left uh, any. There's, there's some great pieces still coming um, that you'll be seeing in a second, actually. Nice varied series of pieces, and that's why I like this so much. So Thomas Burnett, Hulk, I mean Kermit. <laughs> I've been doing this for 100 minutes. So, uh, yeah. Um, I've said that the Hulk... It's a little bit too flashy where this piece manages to take it down a lot. Um, the green integration on the bezel, the, the color used, very important. And I, I, this was the last generation of the Kermit. Actually, that you bought this the last year that the Kermit was around, I think. And just if you could correct me if I'm wrong, Thomas. Oh, this is, I mean, everyone seems to love the Kermit. Uh, it's it's one of those anniversary pieces that really stands out, and uh, it's gorgeous. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Everyone loves the Kermit except Clivers. I th yeah, it's okay. Personally, if we're talking about opinions, if you want to hear my opinion on it, I'm not someone who likes green on a Submariner. Really, uh, it's not a color that that really digs into my heartstrings much, which is strange because I love olive finishes on most pieces, but on this watch. In particular, I like that they. It's it's very much a Franken watch when you think about what they did. It's old school case, but dropped the new dial, the the maxi the maxi dial on it, and I mean they barely changed it at all. But just that small adjustment to the dial and the the bezel, and you've got a completely different piece. And in the background, if if anyone wants to know, oops, Thomas Burnett is quite big with music as a hobby on the side. And he loves it. So you can see he's got his mixing software there. I love it. I love wrist shots that have a bit of context behind them where they're placed. And uh, Thomas, thank you for sending this. Uh, <laughs> seaweed, green, Forbin, that's good. And that's, you know, is that what they used? The Rolex green has always been that inspired 
aspect to their pieces. So, but I mean, it does line up with a dive watch. So great. And Clive is, is chatting, yeah, overhyped, yeah. Okay, next, this is from SS, and I don't remember what this watch was. Oh, awesome. Uh, he just sent me this photo saying, great show, uh, good luck, enjoy. And it looks like a blue, it could be a blue dial or a black dial. I don't know, can't see it very well. Across from a 488, I've lost my, my Ferrari references. I, I've, me and cars, I've lost a lot of uh, knowledge over the years. But Skydweller, what do we say? It's a real heavy hitter. And Bud Owen says, starting to like the Skydweller. It's a gorgeous photo, right? Really is nice. It's so cool seeing a bit of context in the background. Um, and I've, if you'd like to see or know more my thoughts around the Skydweller, highly recommend the video. Um, I spoke about why it's a watchmaking masterclass. And what Rolex has done, quite a gutsy move, is to use old school 50s inspired motifs around the GMT and put that into a watch. It's a great piece for what it represents. And what I believe would have defined Rolex in the 50s if they had been able to bring this piece out instead of the GMT. The GMT is a crazy watch. If you watch the video, you'll get a bit more context. But it is, it's it's a very flashy piece. I mean, let's not deny it, the, the bezel and uh, just the polished mid-links and the case. But um, it looks like it could cut you, as Forbin says. It looks really aggressive, right? So gorgeous watch. I don't know if it's a black dial or a blue dial. I'm going to assume it's a blue dial, but I might be wrong. Rolex doesn't use anti-reflective coating, but a beautiful photo. Thank you, SS, for sending it. And now, for those of you who have stayed, for the 200 plus people who have stayed and watched this, the next watch on the show is going to be the most important watch of the show. Why do I say that? This is not just any longer one. This is thanks to Tillman. We connected on Instagram. This is not just any longer one. This is the longer one. The longer one one. The first longer one. First batch. There was only 100 or so of these made. Very, very important piece. And it has practically tripled in value since it, uh, it has been released. This is the 1995 longer one. And the way you can tell is because it has a solid case back. So I, I actually asked him, I think the last time we, we spoke, I asked, must at least have doubled in value by now. And he says, yeah, it has. This is such a statement watch. This really is, I think it's the winner of the show just because of what it represents. You never see a longer one, one. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's and let's talk about hype. Yes, this this watch is very very overhyped in the community. But uh, when you think about just what this watch represented for the brand, how this piece brought the brand back to life, it's great to say that you have the first. And the, I mean, compare there, there's the honey. What's that? The honey longer one. There was only a few references made that that um, Ben Clymer has in his collection. I think this tops it. The longer one from 1995, the one, that's cool. <laughs> as on to saying, let's pack it up. <laughs> uh, I think I think as in that's the end all be all. There's a few more pieces on show. There's a Patek actually. There's only one Patek that was that was sent to me. Um, but I went saying, I don't know. I know it's significance, but I want to see the movement in the longer. And that's, that's it. I mean, the, the bragging right is that it's a solid case back and that it's the one that defined the, the brand. I kind of like the idea. It's so low key, it's very nice. And there's a few little changes. I think they've, they've adjusted the font in a few places. Beautiful photo that he sent me. But this is not all, he sent me a few others. Uh, Tillman sent me, here's another wrist shot. The proportions are something special though, right? Yeah, it's, it's very, very cool. Proportions are stellar, Reed says, <laughs> mic drop. Uh, no Oris, Ryan, you're right, no Oris on the show. Can you believe uh, the variety has been great, but there's a lot more room for improvement. Honey gold, yeah, talking about that. Honey gold longer. This tops it, in, in my opinion. Beautiful piece. Next, this is one of his everyday wearers, I think, and it is a Nomos Ahoy. I think he just, I mean, when you have a longer one in your collection, you know, you don't really need much else for a bragging right. This is just cool. You got, I, like, I like the crown guards, actually. Strange integration. Has that tangenta-inspired motif very much. 
the uh, the German style that Bauhaus elements that they use in their watches, but um, it's definitely not a watch that appeals to me much. Nomos, the Orion is the only one that really stands out to me, but I like I like that he can go from something like this to something like this as an everyday wearer, takes it to the beach, just, just enjoys it, just wears it, you know? Uh, also like the color scheme. I don't know how well this shows up, but this off black paired with this creamy, uh, what would we say, caramel, Color scheme is great. There was also a Nomos earlier on, a club. But uh, another thing that's great is the date window integration. Yeah, Nomos is doing some great stuff. Their movements are awesome. Great value for money. Uh, definitely an interesting watch from a German family. And next, oh, just talking about the Globemaster. This is his, basically, when he wants to just wear a casual everyday piece to the office and everything else. Amiga Globemaster, Pipan, I mean, come on. That's all you need, right? Amiga Globemaster, longer one, you're done. I just love it. The blues, uh, the Pipan finish. I've really been looking at the Globemaster in detail. The white, the white Globemaster looks to be such an underrated piece. And the bezel on these watches, let's just get right in and have a look at the bezel. Compared to the fluting of the Skydweller bezel, look how smooth this looks. They've really managed to look at their vintage elements and bring it together into a modern watch. And well, they've done it really well. Omega does some cool stuff. I don't care what anyone says. They, they know what they're doing with a lot of the pieces they make. Maybe not all of them, but this piece in particular. I just love that they've, they've kept the traditional text. They've included a little constellation star at the base, um, the blue highlight. And again, the, the bezel is what really draws me to the watch. I like the fact that the bezel is not shouty. It's not overexpressive. It's almost like a coin edge. And it has that vintage inspired styling around it. Love it. Pencil hands. What else do you need? It's great. It's, it's got enough visual complexity that you can enjoy it, but not too much that it's ostentatious. If you catch my drift, great. Okay. Seeing what else is going on in the chats. I have been, <laughs> I've really spoken a lot and it's been great. I mean, I enjoy it. Uh, love the pipe pan. That's great. It's awesome. I thought I sent my amphibia shot in next time. Matthew, I must have missed it. I really must have missed it. Uh, again, I'll say uh, I've had 50 emails over 24 hours. And I'm, I must have missed something somewhere. But we're going to make this, if, if you enjoy it, I mean, I don't know how we could rate this. Maybe at the end of the show, you could comment saying, do this again. Or I could put up a poll in the community posting asking if you enjoy this. I've really liked it because we can all share. Uh, what is the email we can use to send pics? Logan Hall says. And let me just quickly type it in. It's, it's in the description of the video, actually. So if you scroll down a little bit and drop down, you'll see just under the hashtags, uh, it says, follow me on Instagram, contact me. And there it is. It's inquire.idguy. And uh, yeah, we need to do another. But I think instead of sending me just a ton of photos now, I will ask for them again in March as the next month goes. This will be a, a, a once in a month thing where we can all sit down and enjoy ourselves. But this piece, the Globemaster is a watch that's really caught my attention a lot. And the italic font, it's, oh, really? What does he say? Joseph says the italic font on the annual Globemaster is awful. We're we talking about this. I, th I think this, this cursive italic font looks great. It, it draws back to that old styling. I mean, if you're going to have a pie pan and a baby fluted bezel, and the applied logo and everything, you might as well just go full hog with Constellation Star and everything. They've really tried to play off all the vintage. I mean, even the case design, you notice the case has a has an integrated element to it, and uh, that's cool. <laughs> Flip and zipper, it, trust me, and I'm, it's, it's so daunting. I cannot, I cannot get back to the emails that I'm receiving because it's just, it's 50 in less than 24 hours. I can't say thank you 50 times and, most of the time I get emails sent to me and uh, their essays and it's impossible. I, you know, socializing is the fifth thing on my list compared to preparing videos and recordings and write-ups and everything else. <sighs> it's difficult. The first Omega Speedmaster we've seen the entire show. And this is the only one, actually, no, it's not. It's the only professional that's been sent in. And it looks great. I mean, this is a beautiful photograph. This is from Tobias. He sent me some cool pe uh, pictures. I don't know where this is. He might have mentioned it in the photo, but uh, who doesn't like a professional? 
And this watch really suits him well, really fits his wrist nicely, right? Great, love it, love it. You can't go wrong with this watch at all. Beautiful photo again. We get to see it in all its glory in the light. I mean, even got the time in a perfect place where you get to see the dial. One speedy, there's a few. Zonda, there's, there's two more and they're all different. It's great. I just love the fact that you all sent in such a varied selection of watches. And uh, yeah, M-O-T-F-M, exactly, Paul. Love it. So great photo, really superb. And again, Tobias, if you're watching, highly appreciated. This is him at a boutique trying on another Lunga, just the perpetual calendar, Saxo Matte. And we can just admire the image. So some of these photos were taken at boutiques, so we get to see it in a, in a different lighting. I hope one is the first Omega in space. But Owens, you hit the nail on the head there, brother. Uh, I love the loom hands, actually. It's, it's something about this watch. It's a dress watch that looks to be something more than, it can be used as something more than just a dress watch. You can wear it all day, every day, never have to worry. <laughs> Miss Perpetual, did Horology House send any photos? No, didn't. Unfortunately, this photography is amazing. You can't you can't deny that at all. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen. That whole debacle that's been going on. I don't want to talk about that drama. It just gets irritating. But it's this piece is just stunning, right? I love it. The the attention to detail, longer. I was before running this show. I was thinking about doing a longer dedicated stream. And uh, Zonda. Photos lost in a bushfire. Yeah, I mean, you know, and a volcano at the same time. Shame. It's awesome. Just another longer. Like that is all, Mason says. <laughs> Does someone actually say that? Uh, it's cool. And David B., the Sea Dweller 43. I never received it as a, as a photo on the show. The best I got was a 14 mil Sea Dweller ceramic. But, you know, always open to other pieces. If this does become popular, I'm sure we're going to get into a lot more trouble with the watches that we see. Beautiful, though. Uh, I don't know so much. If, if I was going for a longer like this, I don't know so much if I would be drawn to the high complication with the day, date, month, year, leap year, the whole deal, moon phase. Uh, do love the big dates, but it's, it's too much for someone of my tastes. Uh, Design-wise, I much prefer the simplicity. I think Lunga and their simplicity with the way they, they manage to balance the highly complicated movement with the simplicity on their dials, that is the sweet spot for the brand. Okay, getting into the next. This is also from Tobias. Beautiful Zeeblue Milgauss again. I think this was the only other Milgauss sent in. So we had two, but the color scheme, completely different. And uh, Bud Owens, my Lunga is an 1815 chrono. Well, there is an 1815 that's going to be featured at the very end of the show. So I think I think you might see it. And it's a gorgeous piece. The photo is amazing. It's actually the very last image, just because the, the, the sender called himself Z. So beautiful dial. Love the finish. Uh, what else can we say about it? Love the highlights, orange. You know, it's, it's such a character. It really is one of those pieces that... Is so playful. Highly suggest you have a look at a video I called the Einstein Rolex. No, was it? I think it was. Yeah, the Einstein Rolex, I called it. And looks at the developmental history of the Milgas from the early days to the 1019 to the modern era and just how they've taken both the formality and the playful elements, put them together and come up with this crazy piece. There's thoughts that this piece is going to be discontinued well, the Milgauss in general is going to be discontinued Basel World this year. Who knows? Thomas Burnett, as always, brother, thank you so much for the super chat. You've sent me so many emails in the last few days. I can't keep up. <laughs> I need to catch up with everything you've sent. But, you know, I, uh, I've i really enjoyed this. It was a lot of work doing all of this uh, saving and naming and everything in between everything else. But it's it's been a pleasure because we can all see what everyone else is wearing. You in the chats are actually seeing the watches that have been sent in, or you who are watching this after the show. Um, Javier, thank you so much. Really, uh, if, if this does pick up, I'm sure we'll be seeing so many more pieces as it goes, and uh, I really hope so, because it just shows how, yes, Rolex is prominent, yes, Omega is prominent, but there's so much more, you know, from Zodiacs, Seikos, Zelos, uh, you know, there's so much variety in the pieces that we have. Moses, and it really gives you a better idea of the community and what the community has. 
and just who you're really appealing towards, you know? And Chi Town, yeah, this, this is great. Uh, I thank you so much for the super chat, Chi Town. Loved your time, X. It was really quite the outlier in the show. <laughs> And Reed, you've been mentioned. Your photos are incredible. Thank you so much for sending them to me. Uh, love it. Okay, a few more watches to go. Another shot from Tobias. This watch is, is quite important, actually. Paying homage to a solid gold Speedmaster. This is also taken in a boutique, if I'm not wrong. I think this is actually his piece. And I say that because that looks like a champagne glass. Haha. -ha. I think this is a piece that he picked up at the boutique. Look at that thing. I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a killer watch. Very collectible, highly collectible. I don't know the full extent of the story behind its anniversary because as we know, Omega has about as many limited edition anniversary pieces as one of their reference numbers. But this is just gorgeous that the, the contrast between the gold, the, the varying levels of the gold, the champagne on the dial and that brown bezel black uh, they've really managed to capture that vintage reference and done a great job. Next, Tippy. If you're still on, Tippy, you shared a Hamilton with me a long time ago, probably during the, the stream, uh, the end of that stream a couple of weeks back. I love this piece. I think this chrono is getting a lot of attention because of the value it offers for the price. And uh, I think the contrast is great. I much prefer the model with the the panda aesthetic, the white dial, the black contrast. Beautiful looking watch though, I think. And also on a, on a brown leather strap, it looks great. It really is very classical for the most part. I'm seeing so many people commenting. Uh, found it. I haven't, James, I haven't spoken to you at all this evening and I apologize. <laughs> Thomas Burnett, yeah, we, we tend to uh, chat a lot, James. He's, he's such a great guy. Highly recommend you get in touch with him over email or Instagram. Uh, William, thank you so much. Don't go yet because the, the last but not least, there's three more pieces to go and the last watch you want to see, trust me. Mark P, thank you so much for the super chat and guaranteed you will enjoy the watches of the show. Uh, and Gel Mipson, Gel Mipson. <laughs> it's been great seeing you on Instagram. Yeah, cool. Uh, the panda is not white, it's cream, Tippy. Really? It look, looks white. I'm, I'm guessing it's just lighting, a lighting contrast and everything else. Beautiful though. I think that just if we just get a closer zoom to the the dial itself, it's so nice seeing the detail of all of these plots on the actual racing dial, the track, the surrounds, and two registers, really nice and clean. Plays on that vintage motif. Anyway, we have been running for two hours, so I will get up with these last three three pieces. I highly suggest you keep watching. It feels like I've missed a few. I think I've missed a few pieces that were sent to me. Oh no, Vaughn. Vaughn sent me this from a boutique. He's really been eyeing a JLC GMT chronograph. Beautiful getting one. And Clive, Clive sent me a photo like right, right at the end, like the last minute before the show began. And I put it in this list, but it must have disappeared. I kid you not, there were five watches and one was a Patek and I don't think, I don't think it got put in here. Damn it, I apologize about that. To all of you, I think one, once again, I, I need to uh, have a cut off time like an hour before the show so I can just get everything prepared nicely. But this is a beautiful looking watch. JLC again, we had a look at the master compressor, same dial layout. Uh, Flip and Zippo, two damn good hours. It's been so much fun. I really enjoyed this time. I, I didn't think we would take two hours to run through all of these pieces, but it's been so good seeing what you share. And uh, yeah. Beautiful watch. And the complication, I mean, you have a world time plus chronograph complication. I mean, where do you get that nowadays, you know? Okay, moving on, Warren, first Omega in space. These are some of the last submissions before, geez, there was a Blanc Pond sent to me. I can't believe I've missed it. Hmm, I think what I'll do is I'll pull them up if I am uh, lucky. See, Les, my, my enthusiasm, you jumped from K to M and missed the L's, still great show. You're kidding me. Did I really? <laughs> Let's have a look. I'm actually going to go back and have a look. First Omega in space. It's a beautiful looking piece. I think, you know what? I think I must have. What have I done here? How did I miss the L's? K, K L M. Les, I know that you sent me an image and I saved it somewhere and I must have. <sighs> okay. I'm only human at the end of the day. But uh, <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it's uh, it can only do so much. I'm sure I'll be able to pull them up now, though. Let's see what we can do. Last but not least, beautiful photo, by the way. First Amiga in space, talking about the Ed White Speedmaster that's getting so much hype. I think this piece is one that should be focused on a lot now. You should really try and grab it as soon as possible because it is essentially the same watch for half the price, like less than half the price of these new uh, Ed White Speedmasters with the 321s. Okay, last but not least, the, the real heavy hitter of the show. This was submitted by Z, an Alunga and Zona 1815. Now, if I'm not wrong, this is one of the first generations. And uh, we watch guy emailed me mine during the show. <laughs> yeah, I can't exactly check emails while, <laughs> while bringing up these watches. I wish I could. But uh, yeah, I, I've, I've obviously missed a few suggestions. And there were some great watches that were sent in. There was a Blancpain, Clive's Moser he had on. And I distinctly remember putting them in the list. And I must have missed it somewhere. I don't know how it disappeared. But I had it all lined up and ready to go. So last but not least, I mean, this is a real watch too close off the show i would say to be saying are we going back to google i don't think so i think we've we've done a good job it's actually quite nice to keep it within two hours for a change you know this is a beautiful piece what i really love about this and this might just be the first gen i you might need to correct me someone in the audience uh but i love the fact that they use these almost wicket wicket style if you, if you know cricket you know that wickets have the stumps and this this divider I love the fact that they keep that running all the way through. And what it does is bring down the overall visual presence of the dial on the wrist in a way. It looks so much more complicated, but it's still simple enough to read and it's very traditional. I think it's just the best. And he was sitting back dropping a whiskey as he, was, uh, as he sent the photo to me. I think this was uh, a couple of days ago. I think quite early on. Beautiful watch. This one really does stand out. Um, so this is crazy. I can just imagine my email is going to get nuts now, but I'm going to try, you know, with regards to replying, don't count on me to reply to all the emails because there really are so many that it's now getting virtually impossible. I need to hire a team of people, some to help with the editing, some to help with the, you know, uh, but I can say that that the response to the series and to the, just the question, the simple question of me saying, send me. A wrist shot and how it has actually turned into a show by itself and the level of variety that we've seen in the selection where nothing is the same and there was even more variety that i must have missed let's see if i can pull out of this and bring up the other watches i can't believe that i missed other pieces shared <laughs> okay now you know what i'm dealing with here what an absolute mess i'm going to take you behind the stage this, this is probably why I botched it in the beginning. I'm going to do this. Bear with me for a second, everyone. There's a few duplicates that were shared. I don't know. Oh, dear me. This is Clive's Moser Pioneer. It's just there, there was lots. There was a Blanc Pound 50 Fathom sent to me, lots of other pieces. John sent me this gorgeous, gorgeous-looking Patek. I don't know how I've missed it, but somehow I did. Look at this. It's an annual calendar chronograph. And this happened quite literally two minutes before the show. So I'm pretty sure that's why I missed it. But it's just insane. There was a beautiful Smiths that was sent to me as well. I'm going to try and, and be as diligent as possible. Get these up before the show ends. How did I manage to miss these pieces? Rene sent me a Fortis. <laughs> uh, small seconds, Clive. Apologies. Uh, okay. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to see if I can pull up as much as possible. I don't know how I managed to close off and get rid of the images that were here. These were quite literally the last minute images. Uh, what else was sent? Beautiful image from John. Explorer, black dial, we hadn't seen. Freddie Turner, your Smiths. It was such a beautiful photo. I'm going to try and get it up. I don't understand. I think my, my uh, preview is actually glitching out somehow. I don't know what it's doing. But, you know, we live and learn. Let's see if I can pull up another. No. So this is what happens. If you don't prepare and if you don't, like, keep an order to everything, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, I think we're going to end with this because this is really one of the defining pieces. This is from Freddie Turner. Smith's. I'm, you see what happened there? I swiped and then it disappeared. How I, I'm swiping left and right and all of a sudden they're coming back. Here's another piece. 
your name doesn't seem to even be highlighted here. I don't know what's going on. Oh my goodness. People, we have officially lost contact. This has just turned into a complete and utter <laughs> disaster. But there have been some great watches. I'd like to actually end on the Smiths because I think it's one of those pieces. I started with the Smiths, Smiths Everest. <laughs> like a watch Tinder. <laughs> uh, started the Smiths and then we can end with the Smiths W10 as the piece that closes the show off. This is an original. The, the way they, they did the styling with these pieces with the crown, the size, the proportions, the balance, it's just something else. And I'm sure there's some more people joining in. Nice Patek, yeah, it's just, it's just insane. I'm, I really, it's a pity that I missed it because there were a few pieces that came in last second that I wanted to throw in. They must have gotten hidden somewhere, but you know, beautiful looking wash. I love the Smith's piece. And I'm gonna try again to swipe right <laughs> and see if I can get another piece up. I don't know if it'll work. No. Swipe left, we get an Omega DeVille. This is another submission. I don't know, I can't remember who sent this to me. Another beautiful looking piece. Yeah, so we're kind of riding on the seats of our pants right now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this has been great. It's been such a good show. I've really enjoyed the sitting back and just sharing. Somehow jumped Thomas Burnett. I don't know why. Longines. I've got a write-up on this exact piece coming up very soon. Longines Heritage Classic. Again, your name, whoever sent this to me, it might have been Freddie who sent this. Um, <laughs> I missed, I've lost it somewhere, but this piece deserves a write-up and it's it's really good. I just need to sound record and get it edited and prepared. But this watch needs more attention. Freddie, beautiful watch. Congratulations for picking up this piece. I think it's it's one of, it's such an important watch for the brand of Longines that they can bring back a piece like this. Still stick to that heritage, but but have that sec that sector dial. I really think this is a one of the best sector dials the money can buy you today. I know that I did a video on the JLC sector series. This one in particular, with the way it's been balanced and set and placed, all of those motifs added in. It's just it really is a sector dial watch, for sure. Uh, and Casey says you'd like to see more write-ups on Longines. So as it is now, this, this piece is coming up very soon, I would say within the next week or two. And then there's a discussion on the big eye, which should be fun. And if I swipe right again, what do I get? Oh, geez, who was this? I think this might have been Freddie again. I love, this is a Breguet. <laughs> see how important it is? There's still 200 of you watching. Uh, this, this is another watch that, that I think is just, the retrograde is a Breguet for me. If I could buy a Breguet right now, this would be the one I would go for. Uh, retrograde, it's down to do the seconds. The fact that the seconds runs and then jumps back to naught. It's such a superb complication. The balance on the dial. If you have been watching all the way through, you saw that we chatted about a crazy Breguet reference with a full like, open exposed work. Mm. It's great. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side, we should go through the entire list again in something. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, we've had a great time, and I just love that level of variety, and I think now we've somehow jumped back. So what we can do, just to uh, run back through the series again, for those who haven't been on the show the whole time, wrist shot week, I want this to be a monthly thing, where one week we'd run a live show where you submit your wrist shots, I put them together, bring out a series. Breguet retrograde, as good as it gets. I agree, Zonda, absolutely beautiful. Okay, so what we can do just in the last, I don't know, five minutes, run through the pieces that I have on the screen uh, for those of you who might have missed the beginning. And uh, was it also a retrograde tippy? Oh dear. <laughs> See how bad I am with references and, and those details. Okay, so uh, call it one off the wrist, Phil says. Hmm. I like the idea of, of wrist shot week because it's easy to remember. And as, as an underlying name, I can in, in future tag it during the live show so that it's easier to find for people. But it's just been, it's been nuts. Okay, running through these again. My Little Smiths, Everest. I love this watch. It's one of my favorites by far. I just, oh, I think it's just such a lot of fun. <laughs> Wrist cuffs. Okay, just I'm slowly but surely going to go through them. I'm not going to spend time on these pieces. Ant G, Vacheron 56. Beautiful. Antong, Milgaus, taken with a Nikon. Stunning. Love it. Love the, the, the high detail quality photo. Blue Shirt, Polar, Explorer 2, with a Seamaster, also from Blue Shirt. 
Brian, beautiful Submariner, super case, the only no-date Submariner featured on the show, unbelievably enough, no duplicates. Casey, this has to be one of the watches that really stood out to me. JLC, Master Ultra Thin Beads of Rice Bracelet. This watch really does come into its own with its bracelet, don't you say? Superb. I hope this is okay. I'm just going to slowly but surely go through these, and then we can end the show off. Uh, I think for those of you who haven't seen the full the full development, beautiful photo from Casper. This is an Explorer 2, five-digit reference. Love it on this racing-style strap. Contrast, it's just great. I think it's a gem. Next, this is also from Casper, Yachtmaster, Blue Dial, awesome piece. And I hope you're keeping up with the with the stream. I'm just slowly but surely gonna gonna roll through. Um, okay, next love I love the Dark Master. I think it's just such a cool piece. Uh, Doxa from Casper again. Doxa diver. Yes, we had a Doxa on the show. Lots of and I, there's mention from Phil saying that there are a lot of explorers. Just in general, Explorer twos really were dominant in the show, which is crazy. I didn't expect it. I expected to see so many Explorer ones. For the most part, not Explorer 2s. Uh, so Doxa, this watch needs to be covered in more detail. We see this piece with the orange dial and seeing it with a navy dial, it's a beautiful photo as well. Navy dial with the orange highlights, just 70s, cool. Another one from Casper, Nomos Club. Love the photography again. This really, this, this photo really does highlight the flatness of the dial and that clash of colors. Great. Next, Cedar Canoe with a very Unique Zin Blue One. This is an anniversary piece. It's it's important to the line. I don't know enough to uh, give you the full spec of it, but I like that 70s, just 70s everywhere you look. And the Zin bracelet, beautiful. This is from Sevi, driving a 2CV, wearing a two-tone Zenith Daytona on a rubber strap. It's just great. Should call this the ID guy, whisk, whisk, whisk. <laughs> Founder, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, okay, next, Christian, the only Explorer 1 sent to me. I mean, how's that? I know it's technically Explorer, but call it the Explorer 1. Uh, so it's, a, and there was a question whether this was a 1142. I'm pretty sure this might be the last generation because it has a solid bracelet, solid end link. Might be wrong there. Beautiful photo. Can't go wrong with a 36. Okay, next, Timex. This is from Cheetown, California. And uh, he threw in a Timex. Not as cool as the Q Timex, in my opinion. I think they're playing way too much now to the, the Rolex-inspired mode. You know, something about the Q Timex that was cool is that it's just a, a charming, uh, what would you say, cliche watch that also plays uh, plays in with the, the older aesthetic of the original. This one seems to be quite the cash grab in contrast. Next, from Craig, a beautiful two-tone GMT. Also on a rubber strap. And this one looks like an Everest, could be an Oyster Flex, uh, fully integrated. And it's just cool. I mean, what's amazing is that it's a two tone, but you can wear this every day, no problem. And it just looks great. Nice contrast. Black and gold seems to work so well. And Founder Times Capital, love the Smith's brand. I agree. I should have mentioned in the beginning that if you'd like to get my attention, tag me at IDGuy, hashtag IDGuy. I'll see your comment a lot easier. Uh, rubber B, full says. Okay. I'm so bad with rubber straps in general. Apologies. David C. This is David Coffey, by the way. He sent this right at the very end before the stream started. Beautiful highlight. This is a, a, a root beer, CHNR. The blue highlight on the style. I, I say this so much, but I really enjoy the root beer a lot. Go back to the Breguet. We will tipping. We'll get there eventually. Dear Artifact, Tudor, if you don't follow Dear Artifact, get on Instagram, have a look at his stuff shares some amazing pieces, uh, great selection of watches. His collection is just stunning. Eric Bell, 55 millimeter diver. I cannot for the life of me tell the name. It starts with an A-R-A -A by the looks of things, but it's so nice. This is when he was diving in Greece. It's so nice seeing the watch being used in the water. Nice and uh, lively, nice atmosphere. <laughs> this is a photo of him with his Siamese cat. It looks like he is about to take over the world with a Seiko tuner. PVD, great. Fahim, uh, also known as King Flume on Instagram. I've mentioned this in the beginning of the show. Follow his, his page. He's just picked up this new resonance from Jean, and he loves this. And his photography is amazing. I mean, I asked him to send these to me, and we had a good look at this watch in the beginning of the show. 
beautiful photos, stunning watch. And of course the movement, 18 karat gold, twin balance. I mean, you can't go wrong with this watch. It's just, it's one of those real definitive pieces that makes a collection whole. If you want a Jean, this is pretty much the Jean you want. Uh, Founder Timeless Capital, he's still in the chats. Great to have you here, James, as always. And he shared a series of his GPs, Gerard Perigo. He loves the brand. He thinks it's so underrated. You actually missed the section of the stream, James, but everyone was saying just how underrated and how impactful GP is as a brand and how more people should pay attention to them. As you said to me as well, I should focus more on this brand or have a look at it in more detail. I think the balance, the way they've sectioned off the dial in such a way that you can see the movement working, but you've got your main barrels at the top, small dial, yes. I also think the power reserve indicator is unique, modern. Uh, this seems to be a much more modern piece compared to Jean. You can take a lot more inspiration from, uh, you know, it looks more automotive when you look at it. And just a few more pieces. I don't know the extent of all of these pieces, but by all means, James, you can you can list the watches as I go through them, if you like, for everyone else, because uh, these watches are so above and beyond my pay grade. <laughs> uh, just beautiful. I mean, I, I just love what I like about this, especially skeletonized dial, but you can still read it. It's so legible because of the hands and that it's not the, the actual skeletonization is not overpowered. You get to see the movement and the gears and the barrels, the balance, but you know, you've got so many bridges in between that you can, make out the time pretty well. Great watch, so thank you so much. And uh, next, from Fardim, we have a Prospex. This is reference, again, I'll say, SPB053J1. Try and say that when you're hammered. Casey Jones, thank you so much for the super chat. It's been a pleasure. Your JLC was a knockout. I, I My mouth opened when I saw it. When you sent it to me, my email, I was my jaw dropped when I saw it. I love it on the braces. Made me consider the watch, actually. One of those watches that I would love to get in a collection. Um, okay, next, lovely Seiko. I said it takes inspiration from the 63 MAS. Uh, I stand by that point, which is the original Seiko back in the day. This is one of the heavy, heavy hitters. I got the reference completely wrong, but this is also a retrograde seconds. This is from Guautan. He sent this over and it is just a, a knockout. Uh, really does epitomize Breguet, classically proportioned, styled, looks like a pocket watch. Beautiful. So it's, uh, yeah, so Tippy, I think Tippy's referring to this Breguet now, the retrograde. Uh, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. One of the real heavy hitters of the show. 7097 for everyone interested. Hell of a piece. Next, from Gavin, another Black Bay. This is the ETA variant, as pointed out to me, because of the smiley face. And uh, these are quite sought after now. Very affordable, but fantastic. Next, George, another Explorer 2. This one on a full bracelet, beautiful condition. This watch looks brand spanking new. I think explorers need to be bashed up and used more than any other watch. Next, Cartier Ballon Bleu from Hilario. Haven't looked at these watches in the slightest and have to. So the, the variety that we are seeing here goes to show that the tastes are just nuts, right? What, what everyone has on offer. Next. This is a olive dial day date from Hilario again, white gold. I think the day date really deserves those Roman numerals. Beautiful olive dial, flat in this light, but just exciting as anything else. James, another James. I think this is James Conn who sent these in, and you'll see James Conn in the chats normally. Uh, Carlos, thank you so much for the super chat. I hope you've been able to see some of the show. It's been amazing. We've run through everything, and I hope a lot of you who have been watching have also been privy to the conversation and everything else. So uh, this is a beautiful sea dweller, the first ceramic sea dweller, one of the best and the most sought after in the sea dweller line, I would say. Sea dweller 4000 full, I think I got the reference. I said it was a 116600. I think I must have botched that completely. Just uh, just thinking <laughs> off the top of my head. Selton, don't worry. The, the show is going to uh, last forever. The stream is up and highly recommend. Give it, give it an hour and catch up to the show because the watches have been so good. Uh, and this is also from James Conn, another beautiful root beer. This one, for me, it is the root beer that I would be most drawn to. Love the caramel, the tiger's eye effect. Uh, this is a real watch enthusiast's watch and it's just superb. 
your artifact, beautiful selection. Uh, it's it's a pleasure. It really was cool. And what I loved so much, I should have actually short run Phil said as well. Yeah, that's why it's so rare is because they, they only made it for like three years and uh, disappeared off the map completely. So uh, what I loved so much about this, this is also from James Conn, beautiful master compressor chronograph from JLC. I think master compressor line needs to return with JLC. Again, full bracelets on a JLC just is the business. Love it. Um, I, I've had my train of thought talking about just the level of variety and what it means for us as a community. We don't get to see so many watches in one place from so many people. That's what I loved so much about the idea of, of sharing this, this idea for the show. So much variety from so many people, and it's just crazy how each watch appeals to the respective owners. And uh, it means so much for the community because you know we generally judge by what we see shown to us, not so much what is shared with us. And uh, yeah, I think that's the best way I could, I could put it. The fact that you're sharing this with me and I can be the, the soundboard to get it out for everyone else to see, it's an absolute dream. So Jay, Jay sent this to me, Glossus Original Panamatic Luna. Beautiful watch. Next from Jason, crazy Grand Seiko, SPG, SBG K005. You just picked this up. Gorgeous, gorgeous blue dial. And uh, I'm just going to try and close these off because there's so many still to go. And uh, we've been rocking now for two and a half hours. And Nakin sent in by Jesse. Like the Tudor inspired motifs, I think this watch has some of the best loom out there because practically everything glows. Uh, the one critique I have on these micro brands generally is the bracelet integration. I think that extended end link needs a bit more work and attention to detail. Jim, Jim really tugged at my heartstrings. Sending me this actually made me quite sad. <laughs> 1655 and a black, black GMT. And I think this makes for such a great two watch collection because you get to just enjoy the, the complication, but in such a different set of watches. Gorgeous. Uh, and this piece, once again, on a nylon strap, look at it. That's just such a, it looks like it's been used quite a lot in its life, but the photography has been great. And, uh, you know, it's just such a pleasure. Jimmy sends this in and it's a Steinhardt Ocean One. I think it's the, I don't know if it's the first gen or if it's the 39 mil. These watches have gone up crazily in price online. You can find them on eBay, really cheap and I highly recommend it. I've worn one for a long time. I have sold it since then, but uh, it's one of those watches that you can do anything with and it will work, run like a dream. Kevin, Kevin sent in a mini Migler. I don't know if I got that right, uh, but uh, this looks to be quite an interesting piece. And I need to look at Chopard in more detail as the, as the series continues. You know, I'm still learning <laughs> as always. This is, an, this is another Chopard, but this is the XP. This question has been asked of me a couple of times to look at this watch, and we're going to focus on this piece more on other shows. I think this will be featured in the Live 5 next week uh, because it's one of those pieces that needs more attention spent. Love that bluing of the hands and the, the dial. And this was taken in a plane, obviously. Gorgeous. So this is from KK. Next from Matt. And it is the watch that wins the show for me, I'd say, photography-wise and presentation-wise. Zodiac Seawolf. Unreal. Beautiful, beautiful watch. Really makes me think a lot about uh, considering a Zodiac for a collection. Beautiful looking piece. I don't know if um, I don't know if the if the guy is here, if Matt is here watching, but this is one of the best photos of the show by far. I just I just love it. The the, the framing, the lighting. This must have been taken in the car or something, or sitting in the lounge. Love it. So thank you for that. In something, Moser Pioneer, quite the heavy hitter, and he put this piece on a new bracelet that he bought for it. I don't know if you're still here in something, but. Uh, just awesome. And he's got a Fender bass in the background with all the pedals there. And uh, if you're big in guitar, yeah, it's just dream. It's a real heavy hitter watch, but also understated enough that no one would know unless you're an enthusiast, which, uh, which I think is just great. Next, Orange Hand, another Explorer 2, this time Black Dial. And uh, again, what do you need to say about it? It's just, it's just a dream. And I've just clicked away from it. Oops. So Orange Hand, thank you so much for sending this. I'm sure you're here somewhere, or you might have left by now. Uh, Reed, Reed, I'm sure you might be here still. You were checking and saying that you'd like to watch the show later. 
your photos have been terrific. Thank you so much for sending such high quality images. Uh, so this is a 36 Oyster Perpetual, as I was told by Clive, and love that Explorer element, Explorer style dial, it's great. Again from Reed, IWC Spitfire, he's been considering this watch, I've spoken about it at length and highly recommend you have a look at, I did a review on this piece, if you look up IWC Spitfire, you'll see it on the channel. Uh, really pays tribute to field watches and fliegers alike. Next from Reed, Seiko Alpinist, also one of the best. This looks like a pointless reach. If you know Bark and Jack on Instagram, this is a this is an important uh, inspired thing that the group does. A beautiful Alpinist. I think the, the the photography speaks more than anything else with this watch. I like the gold of the ring matching the gold of the of the numerals in the hands. And I just love it. HD quality. It's not a watch that appeals to me much, but it is something that if we if you look at the video, again, looked at this watch a couple of weeks ago and just how the brand has developed the Alpinist and what it means for the future, I highly recommend you have a look at that video as well. We go into a lot of detail about it. Ryan with a Zelos. There's so many, <laughs> so many people in the chat. I've you know, I'm just running through all of these pieces. Uh, I haven't taken any time to actually refer to comments. And um I plan on doing it. You know, if I am running the show, this, this this segment, odds are I will be focusing my attention more to the watches and less on the chats, just because there's so much going on. Beautiful posts from Ryan, and this this fingerprint style dial I've never seen before. Very unique to the Zelos, and it has a sandwich dial, which is also something. At least I think it's a sandwich dial. Looks like it at least. Thomas B. He sent me a gorgeous Zinn, which is an anniversary piece. I think it has a rhodium dial. This is a very important piece to the Zinn family. And someone said in the comments that this is a real tool, German tool watch finest. And I agree wholeheartedly. I think Zinn does something really well with their inspired elements. Ari is saying, amazing idea for a live stream. It is, it's, it's crazy how it's worked out so well. And I have a feeling that... I'm going to be so inundated with other images as the weeks go by. I will be sure to announce when we're going to be running this again <laughs> because I think I have to try and get back to other emails that have been sent to me beforehand. Um, so once a month, I think this should be a stream. Uh, I'm calling it Wrist Shot Week. And uh, so beautiful photo from Thomas. I love the quality of the photo, once again, speaks for itself. I think it's just amazing. Thomas Burnett, I'm sure he's still here, or maybe he's moved to the Archie stream, the Pontiff stream. Uh, Kermit Submariner, I asked him to send to me because it was the only one. And, you know, it is Thomas Burnett's watch now. I think it needs to remain his watch, and he should not get rid of it. I did mention in his collection review that he should consider, maybe if you'd like to get into another piece, but this watch, just sublime. I think it is something else. And I love that he's put his background as the, uh, the mixes because he is into music as a hobby on the side. Future condolences to your email inbox. Ari, I expected 10 and I got 50 in less than 24 hours. So I'm quite worried actually. Uh, might have to work out a different format for how these images are sent to me. <laughs> uh, so again, if, if I don't get back to your emails, know that. Um, you know. So C is asking, how do I get my watch up? Uh, we're going to, uh, when it comes to the time, if, if you need to follow the community, page of the channel where I, it's, it's, an, it's a separate tab on my homepage. And I like to post as much as possible, giving you insight on what's going on. Um, I'll be sure to notify everyone somehow, some way that this is happening again. Once a month, we're going to be running this, this show. And my email, again, if you'd like, my email is in the description of the video. So you just drop down the box. I, I say premiering and testing a new segment. Uh, if you drop down, click the arrow, you'll see that my email is a part of the list. And that's the way you can send it to me. But don't worry, I will ask for the emails eventually. Beautiful Sky Dweller, getting back on topic. This is from SS. I love it, nice and clean. We've already gone over two hours. I need to wrap up the show because it's just getting nuts. I'm gonna flick through these. Very important watch. I think this one really defines the series that we've seen today, because this is a Lunga One One, the first Lunga One from 95. The way you can tell is because it's got a solid back. And this is from Tillman, a beautiful piece. And uh, wears so well on the wrist, stunning. Next, this is also from Tillman, Namos Ahoy. When you own a Lunga, 
you can pretty much wear whatever you want. And this is his his beat around, wear around watch. I think it's just great. He loves his German inspired pieces. Next from Tillman. I mean, you don't need to say much. Beautiful Globemaster, Pipan. Love the way they've done the fluting on this piece. I uh, I can't wait to look. I want to get this piece in my hand and have a good look at it because it's something that I need to do a write up about this as well. Tobias, this, now we're coming to the end of these, luckily. <laughs> I've been talking so much. This is the only Moonwash professional that uh, Seamaster, prof <laughs> Speedmaster professional that I received, which is nuts considering just how many there are in the world. Crazy. And it's a beautiful photo. I think it fits his wrist perfectly. Another from Tobias, a London zona. I don't know if he picked this watch up or if he was trying it on at the boutique, but I mean, you don't need to say much about this piece. It's just the business. Another from Tobias, Milgas again, different lighting, so different dial, superb. Another from Tobias, and I'm pretty sure he picked this up because this looks like a champagne glass over here in the corner. This is a real anniversary watch and one that is quite important to the line, what it represents. Amazing. Then from Tippy, we have a Hamilton chronograph, very unique and interesting watch. It's been spoken about a lot on the you know, gen in the general watch talk. And I hope to get a good look at the piece in the future. Look at what they offer. Be interested in the movements and everything else. Um, beautiful piece. Next is Vaughan. I really wanted Vaughan to send me his, uh, his Vacheron overseas, but he didn't have it on his phone. But you know, this is a great piece. He was trying on at a boutique. He's really been looking at JLC. And this is a world time chronograph. Love the dial. Again, looks just like the master compressor. Gorgeous watch. From Warren, first Omega in space. This is the third Omega Speedmaster that's been sent. They're all different, and I think it's just great. You guys really have nailed it this round. And last but not least, the uh, Alangan Zona 1815 flyback. And this, I believe, to be a first generation piece because of these beautiful, wicked styled tracks that run around the dial. It's been amazing. And there've been so many more pieces that have been sent to me and, and founder times capital suggesting Dropbox step. I think so. I think it's just too much running an email and uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to think of a way to incorporate it. I think Dropbox might be very efficient, uh, but it's just amazing seeing the level of variety that you've all shared and yeah, not much more that needs to be said. There's still 160 of you watching. <laughs> it's, it's been an absolute dream doing this and sitting back and appreciating what everyone else has to offer and share and show. We get a much clearer picture about the community when we see what everyone has. And it's just, it's, it's more incredible than I believed because I was expecting, you know, 10, 15, 20 Rolexes, 10, 15, 20 Omegas, but the variety, nuts. You guys, you guys have done it. such a great job sharing these with me, and I really appreciate it. I'm sure we all appreciate seeing these pieces together. Uh, Thomas Burnett again. Yeah, it's, it's been a great, great show, fixture. I really hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a bit of a different format, but come next week, we can get back onto the horse and talk about uh, the pieces that we normally do with, with the Google page and everything else. But it's been nuts. Let me uh, unshare the screen because this has been going on for quite the while. And just chat to you a bit more before the show ends. Uh, I think we've been running for well over two hours, geez, two hours and 40 minutes at this point. So I think I will call it there for the evening. Wherever you are in the world, it's now half past 12 in the UK, or 20 to one actually. And uh, as always, it's been such a pleasure doing this. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Different segment called Wrist Shot Week that I hope to host every month from now on, where we all as a community can appreciate wrist shots sh shared from everyone else. Uh, so yeah, thank you everyone, really. I haven't, I haven't called out your names much this evening because it's been, as you can see, it's been mad. But uh, how big of a dent did I put in the wine? Cheetown says, I have barely touched the wine. I've been talking so much. And Fauzi, thank you. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. For those who haven't commented in the, in the stream but have been enjoying the talk, it's always a pleasure chatting to you all. Jerry from Australia, uh, you, might, you might have missed the show by a little while. We are just about to close up, but it has been nuts. And yeah, I'll say that much. Have a superb end to your weekend and a great start to your week. And I'll see you again next week. More videos, Tuesday, Thursday. They're all prepared, ready to come out. And I think you'll enjoy them. So. 
always been a pleasure, guys, and see you in the next one. Cheers for now.